Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's FPV podcast. Don't you start laughing at me, Elvin. <laughs> we have a special Canadian special, actually. We're going to be talking to our friends up in the north. They're always great people. And we really want to talk about their Canadian drone nationals and what they're doing with FPV Canada. But before we get to that, Elvin, say something. Hi. Is that it? Is that is that all you're gonna give me? Buy pulse batteries and like free shipping from you FPV Direct or something like that. You just said it. Uh-huh. You said it. Yeah, Shit, I, know. I didn't have to do nothing. Yeah, be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. All right, Matthew from FPV Canada. Please introduce yourself. Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, Want to thank uh, some of our sponsors: Uvify, Foxier, uh, True RC, uh, hey. Airblade. Those guys for for supporting us over the the last little while, and uh, very much appreciated. Cool, man. Nice, it's always nice. great to have companies backing up. You know, the largest event in Canada. Oh, yeah. Am I agree? Did I say that right? It probably is the largest event in Canada, it is, right? It had to be. I mean, uh, for this year. Yeah, like spectators and and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, I mean, it's it didn't hold uh, it didn't hold up to last year, but uh, I think it was definitely uh, good good turnout for for the weather we had. Definitely pretty awesome. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, let's go oh. ahead and go a little bit into your background, Matthew. Like, how did you yeah. get started in all of this? Obviously, like so, you know, like I talk to your guys a lot, like your uh, the Canadian team. And they always say, you know, they're a few years behind in racing, but in terms of organizing, you guys are a few years ahead of us because you're very organized, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of people supporting the same thing, which is kind of nice because you guys, you know, like everybody's heading in one direction, which is pretty cool. So how did you get into it and how do you fit into it? Ooh, well, yeah, I actually started back in uh, 2014. Um at the end of 2014, I saw, I, I remember sitting, um, I was, I was kicking around. It was actually funny. I was going through a little bit of a, you know, looking for my next thing to kind of play with. And, uh, I was looking at jewelry making oddly enough. Um, and I was looking at just these various things like, what would it cost to do this? Uh, and like, how would interesting would it be? And then, uh, I came across these videos of these guys flying drones, um, in uh, France and they were flying around and it was like labeled star Wars or something. And I was like, yeah. Everybody like, knows that it? video. Yeah, Everybody. Man, that, that was that was it. I'm just like that. Yeah, that's it right there. And uh, and I went on Banggood. Uh, I'm not Banggood. Sorry, I went on uh, Hobby King, and I just started looking up and doing research. And I'm like, holy shit, this is this is complicated, right? <laughs> like <laughs> back then, it was yeah. yeah. Uh, I yeah. Going, like, how do I balance out to what ESCs I need to motors to to all this stuff? And I'm and I'm going in and it's like these guys that have these websites that have these like crazy algebraic calculations. And I'm like, I don't even I'm gonna understand what this is saying to me. Right. So mm-hmm. what I did was I basically just got I, I just took a lot of time to go over everything. I found all these little specific equations like um, converting amps or watts to amps. And, and right. you know, and there was only like three. And I was like, OK. So then I created an Excel spreadsheet. And I literally started filling up like all the data, like all the different ESCs, all the different motors, all the parameters I was copying from from Hobby King and then with the links and everything. And I basically created my own little spreadsheet, which then I could go, um, OK, I want these motors. Uh, um, I, OK, and then I want these ESCs. And then it would tell me it would give me errors back of whether they conflicted or something with each other. So then I was like, OK, this is awesome. And so uh, I bought everything. And I remember it, 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 oh, my headphones came off. Uh, I bought everything and uh, it came in and I just had this big box of stuff. And I'm thinking, well, now what? I don't even have a solder on that here. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what wire, what gauge wire do I need? You know, like, uh, you know, things like that. And uh, so I, I got into looking on some of these sites and I'm like, no one's kind of talking about this, like, there's got to be somewhere that people are doing this. And I used to live in San Francisco um, just before I moved here to Montreal. And uh, I remember there was a group that were doing like heli flying and stuff out there that a buddy of mine was, was working with. And I looked on and I found them on, um, on uh, what was it? Meetup. <clears throat> and then I went on to the meetup group and it was, it was the San, San Francisco um, FPV explorers and racers. And, uh, and I was like, that's it. Yeah. So I, I literally like, 
to Montreal. <laughs> you know, I was like, let's see if there's anybody out there that's doing this. Like, it's, it's freaking cool. Like, somebody's got to be able to be doing this. And then, so we had the we we started getting some people come in, and the first few people that I got were a guy named Ryan Walker and uh, <laughs> <laughs> David Whitten. You know, and then we got uh, these other guys. Two of the smoothest uh, talkers, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, the Aussies and. Uh, so, so we get those guys, uh, come in and then we, I had this one meetup where it was just like, I, I kind of put my drone, it was this plastic piece of shit, right. But decent motors and everything, but the frame was, was crap, but I was like, this, this, this is it, right? Look, it's so pretty. And, uh, I bring it to this meeting and there was like three of us show up and we're at this bar in Montreal and I'm like, I've got my drone. I'm like, oh, this is it. And people are like, cool. What does it do? I'm like, it flies. So, um, after that, we were all like, okay, let's, let's get in. And then I had another meeting a month later and that's when David and Ryan and everybody showed up and we had a lot of people. Uh, and we, we went to this gym that I had rented where my daughter, um, went to her day, uh, her, her after school, uh, her after school care. So it's like this community center and they have this, this gym that's like, uh, you know, it's a half basketball, uh, size gym. So I'm like, how much? And it was like 75 bucks. So I'm like, Hey, you guys want to put it together and let's go fly it. So we started flying there every month. And, uh, I mean, it's small gym. <laughs> we literally had our hockey nets. We're sitting down behind the hockey nets and we're sitting there and then people would just walk in. They'd be walking right into like, where the drones were flying. Right? <laughs> and it's like, you know, literally people are standing there going, Oh, this is cool. Like two feet away from their like Neow! in front of their face. And, and then, so I started to panic, like <laughs> this can't be safe. Right. <laughs> and, uh, so, so over the, that summer we ended up going to, uh, a place here It's called, uh, Jean Trapeau, which is, uh, it's like a, an Island that was, was kind of made from, um, the bridges and all that stuff that they built, uh, across the St. Lawrence. And so they, it's like a giant park an amusement park and, and stuff like that. So we would go out there and we'd just kind of have an impromptu, impromptu fly session. And that's when Gab, for the first time, came out. It was uh, it was in 2015. Uh, he came out. I remember that summer because as soon as he came out, that boy was kicking everybody's ass. Like every and it's it's funny. Like if he has been at my at every event that he's been to of mine, he's I think he's only lost one, and that was because he he wiped out. And uh, but yeah, he's he's always been he's always been ripping it. So, uh, yeah, and it just kind of started growing from there. Um, and through 2015, it just, you know, we were, we we're kind of getting to the point where we we're like, okay, we're getting a lot of people and this is becoming, you know, kind of a thing, you know, and somehow I just, I ended up being the guy organizing it, right? I've got a, I do project management and I'm an executive producer. I work in video games. So I'm, I'm all about organization and structure and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so I started talking to other people, um, and, uh, this was in 2015, uh, around and saying, well, guys, like, why don't we start working together? Right. Like, like if we all work together, then we can actually start doing something here. And, you know, and I got, it took a long time to be honest. I got a lot of people that were like, yeah, I really want to. But then when, when the time came to like actually do it, it was just not there, you know, or people were just like, no, I'm going to be a millionaire myself. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I want to fly. <laughs> I want a reason to fly. And, uh, and which is funny because now I don't fly. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I know that feeling. I really yeah, do know yeah. that feeling. You do. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, it, it, it ended up, I got a few people that were interested and it was, um, and it was actually, it was, uh, Nick Iverson that came to me, um, in 2016, I met him and he came to me and, uh, I remember the first time I met, I was just like, wow, dude, you're intense. Um, but, uh, you know, really genuine kind of good hearted guy. And, uh, and so he, he kind of came in and started to help with the website and stuff like that and help with things. And he started something called the, the Canadian drone Academy. And, uh, he was like, you know, I want to teach drones and I want to teach kids drones and stuff like that. I think it's a great, it's a great thing and it's fun and technology. Yay. Um, so, uh, he, he started putting on this thing, um, where it was, he wanted to call it the, the drone expo. And this was 2016. And this was probably just after the first worlds that they had in Dubai. And, and it was like, you know, it's on, 
right? Like this is serious. And, uh, and then that became, he was like, we're going to do it in the summer. And he, he did that. And I was like, look, man, you know, I don't know. <laughs> like it's, it's ambitious, <laughs> you know, like, and, uh, so I was kind of like, no, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to, you know, keep doing little things up here. And then, so I had met around the same time, uh, Jason Manella and, uh, Teeny Jones, and he was sponsoring, uh, he was sponsoring uh, a couple of the races that we were having at Cardomania, which was uh, early 2016. And, uh, so he, him and Nick got connected and decided to start to do the, uh, the drone, uh, the drone expo in Montreal. And, uh, and then realized quickly that they really needed help on the organization and actually running the thing and came back to me and said, like, you need, we need you to do this, you know, like <laughs> we, you know, it's this part of it, like this is, this is you. And, and I was like, okay. And then Nick, you know, I'm sure as you saw the podcasts, stadium dude stadium you know and he's like <laughs> and uh and i'm like stadiums are expensive right <laughs> like you know see and, you two uh, you two are actually perfect each other because one guy he's like think big go big and you're like the realist you're like uh, hold on hold on there's dollar bills associated with all of this can you can you like hold up because like i have to pay for yeah. all of this because you put that on me <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so right, uh, and uh, but you know it was it was funny. It's it, uh, you know it, we all the three of us kind of got together, and we we really we really did have something awesome there that was that was working, and uh, and that we we ended up starting FPV Canada formally because at that point I had already kind of rebranded to FPV Montreal, and a buddy of mine created the logo. Actually, he's uh, he does uh, the Sportsnet, you know, the the Roger Sportsnet website and, and stuff. It's uh, and he's an awesome logo designer and he just whipped that out in like 10 seconds and, and then I, we kind of cleaned it up and, and it became the logo and I was like, I love it. Um, and then we kind of, I kind of built FPV Canada on that because I started talking to the guys out of Ottawa and uh, a guy named David Cormier and he was uh, wanting to do something in Ottawa and he loved it and he's like, I want to, I want to come under and I want to build that brand that we've been talking about, you know? And funny enough, the originally what we called it was not FPV Canada. It was actually called the Canadian Drone Coalition, the CDC. Mm -hmm. And, uh, which was, uh, which was something I even registered the website and everything. And, uh, I don't know if I have it anymore, but, uh, I thought it was kind of a cool name, but uh, it ended up becoming FPV Canada because, uh, the FPV was really, you know, everybody asks me why FPV and, uh, because no one knows what it is. You know, it's like people, people go like, what? And I said, well, you know, I kind of come from video games. So I'm, I've got a lot of advertising and stuff that we've, we're getting thrown at. And, and my background is, is advertising as a graphic designer. So I'm used to getting a lot of, uh, a lot of things thrown at me. So anytime you can get somebody to stop and say, Hey, what is, or what is that? Um, you know, it, it's, it's a good conversation that's going to stick in people's minds mm -hmm. and, um, as well as something people won't forget, but as well as because I didn't really see it as drone racing. I saw it as FPV. Um, and this is the really important thing about, uh, I think the future of FPV Canada and where I really want to, uh, ultimately to take it is FPV is the thing that unites everything. Otherwise it's just flying a drone, driving a car or boat or whatever else like you know it's cool but it's only going to last you so long um like before i got my fpv on my drone it was just like okay yeah it's great for 10 minutes um and uh so that's kind of why i put the fpv I, every everything under fpv canada or fpv montreal originally and just to kind of create that 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 cohesion of, of everything um so because I didn't want to spe specify any specific one. Um, then I'm getting sidetracked. Well, uh, no, actually. <laughs> here's the thing. because I'm glad you brought this up because I, I will tell you a mini story, and I think you can relate to this. When we started our podcast, right, we kind of ran through names because, like, initially, like, you know, when you start a podcast, you're like, drone podcast. You know, it's like that. that's the initial thought that comes to mind. And then you think <laughs> about it. You're like, do I really want – the word drone in my podcast because that sets me on a yeah. specific path, right? Whereas FPV is a little it, 
in agnostic, right? You can you can really go in a multitude of directions with that. Oh yeah, and it's in and, and, and the branding is actually kind of cool. But like, but like you said, nobody knows what this is, so it'll stop people. But it's also hard for people to find you because they don't even know where to start. Right. So like, th- there's like pros and cons to this, and uh, yeah. just having just hearing you saying. FPV Canada is a good thing is kind of good because like when I first registered that I'm like is this right or am I just kind of like nobody's ever going to yeah. find me because nobody knows what FPV is that's kind of what you know, I like, initially thought like we were going to do FPV hyphen podcast you know mm-hmm. making that decision is a big big decision you know it's trying to figure out how do you cohese things and include everyone without excluding anyone you know exactly and fpv is definitely the way to do that i mean it 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 look i just saw today uh a commercial on tv for a radio controlled truck that had fpv it it shows a guy two kids racing fp rc trucks one on a one on a phone and one with goggles on Mm-hmm. You know, and and I'm like, see, now yeah. we're starting to get mainstream. See, now yes. now we're going to get sucked. We're going to get that 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 ground roots backyard boys coming out to do some FPV. In. Mm-hmm. Here's what I That's think. It. Yep. Here's what I think is that we're suffering now because nobody knows what FPV is. But right. when the DRL finally popularizes or commercials or whatever, whatever it is. When it finally gets there where everybody knows FPV like they know, like first-person shooters, FPS. FPS, right. FOV. It, right. it will POV. be locked in. Exactly. We'll be <laughs> locked in because we have those names locked yep. down. And Arm. it's yep. like, we're good. We're good. Yep. Right. So That's exactly – that. That it was exactly something that I had considered as well. It's like, how easy does that roll off the tongue? <laughs> Not easy, but, you know. Not easy. But, it'll, but, it'll get there. But sorry. Yeah, it'll uh, get there. Yeah, that was a that was my tangent. I'm sorry. Oh, it's but, all good. It's uh, all good. FPV Canada. Uh, I'll just read yeah. uh, what what it is. It's like uh, FPV Canada is a drone racing association in Canada, working across the country to bring professional drone racing events uh, to professionals and beginners. So that's a pretty lofty goal. So like, mm-hmm. where are you in this process? <laughs> where, where where are you reading that? Is that from my website. <laughs> He's I like, stole it from wrote, your Facebook who page. That shit? He's like, who wrote that shit? <laughs> hey, you uh, you wrote it, therefore you have to own up to it. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. Yes, it is. It is. It is a lofty goal. I think. Uh, you know, the past. <laughs> the past year has definitely been a lot of uh, kind of figuring out. You know, the the kind of where to kind of situate yourself. Um. To be honest, I think uh, there was no professional. I mean, really. So it was like, fuck, <laughs> we're professional too, right? <laughs> and uh, because we got cab racing, we've done, you know, the, all of these different things. Like, what else is there? Right. So I'd say it's, it's, it's the closest thing that we've got to professional. And uh, so, but I think, I think that is probably... Uh, definitely something i want to uh, we're going to be revisiting as well as like where we situate ourselves it's definitely a, a big focus for next year um for sure so, so did fpv canada was that born from trying to create the first canadian drone nationals or was that idea before canadian drone nationals and it just morphed it, it was before um but just before like it was kind of all happening at once. It was really the catalyst there, uh, as I kind of touched on it was the, the Dubai, the Dubai worlds. That was that all of a sudden I remember when it happened, it was January. It was like, la, 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 we're doing some stuff. February. It was like, Oh, we're doing some stuff. Look, it's cool. And then March was like, Holy shit. <laughs> a million <laughs> dollars, a million dollars. <laughs> it, even that, it was just like, all of a sudden it was like, Every, you know, it seemed because we we're so into all of this stuff, it was like 
it really was kind of a thing that brought a lot of this together. And, and I mean, I, I noticed it and, and I noticed all of a sudden everybody started reaching into it, you know, and it was kind of like, okay, all these people that I had contacted over the last few months were all of a sudden like, okay, yeah, this is, this is we, let's this do this. Is real. Yeah, yeah, this, this is, is real. this, this is, this is the time. Right. And, and that was, um, that was about three months before we did the, uh, the, the first, uh, the Canadian nationals with the IDRA. Uh, and that was uh, at the Montreal Drone Expo. Um, now, uh, we could probably touch on later the, the confusion uh, between the naming there that I would like to address as well, um, because, you know, it's definitely nothing delicious. Um, but, uh, yeah, so can, FPV Canada started, um, and then with all of this stuff, it was the thing that helped it kind of launch and get the, the recognition. Um, and because I had built this entire framework and foundation around it, it was, I just started to use uh, all the tools that I had, um, to start giving access. And, you know, again, this, it's, it's funny how, um, I look back and I, I've over the last couple of years with all of this stuff happening, I'm realizing how many of the things throughout my life that I'm incorporating into this. And it's really, really bizarre. And, and, you know, uh, I'm, you know, I went to school, I was a graphic designer. I designed logos, I designed, uh, packaging. I did all of that stuff. I moved through, I was doing digital media when the internet came about. I did the first, uh, some of the first websites that were, that were out there. Um, you know, then we were doing CD ROMs and then we were doing, you know, all of this stuff, which led me into getting into video games. And then, uh, I went through the music industry, you know, doing stuff and then, you know, learned, it was funny how the music industry parallels a lot of different things, what's happened there to what's happening in video games to what's kind of happening on funny enough into FPV. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's like all of these things are kind of coming together. Um, where I can apply all of these different skills. <laughs> the problem is I'm just one person. <laughs> That's always how it is. But you know what? All of those skill sets that you learned was essential to making FPV Canada what it is and why it's so organized and why, uh, at least on the outside, right? On the inside, I'm sure there's plenty of turmoil like every organization, but on the outside, it looks very organized. It looks very professional and all of your guys, you know, they're marching all in the same direction, which is what you really need. You know, a lot of times they do not march in the same direction. Trust me, <laughs> talking to a lot of organizations, there's a lot of people that say, yeah, we roll up under them. But they're all like, it's like, what? Where are you going? Hold on. I'm confused, you know, and like I'm the one that's trying to get information from you. OK, like you all got to go this way first. Anyway, it's, it's actually funny. It's it's but it's a good point. Um, and I think the, the way that, uh, I've always approached it is that, you know, I'm, I'm doing this because I enjoy it and I want to bring something to help other people enjoy it as well. Like, dude, like I'll make money off this. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm in debt from this. Right. So this is not, Elvin this is not something that, that I'm doing. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I have another full-time job that I go to during the day, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I work and, you know, 40 to 60 hours in that. And then I come home and I work, you know, another 40 hours in the rest of the week on um, weekends to do this. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely because I, I think that this is, this is something awesome, uh, really. And, you know, I, I really try to just, I, I want people to be involved to, to help. And my attitude has always been like, whatever we can do together to, to build this. And I've been lucky enough to have some awesome people that, you know, see the same, uh, kind of things and where it's going and, and want to do that. And it's, it's more about, you know, just trying to do something fun, uh, which doesn't always work out. Um, you know, and I, I would say that, uh, this year's drone nationals definitely had uh, a few, few hiccups, um, that, uh, that we haven't really, seen up until now, which, you know, kind of gives some insight into how we need to reorganize and we kind of configure everything. But, uh, but for the most part, you know, I think, um, even through this year, this year has been definitely a, a strong year of change within the FPV community in Canada because of all the regulations that have come down and all, the, you guys already had that hit you, um, which was, I think, uh, 2016. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Although so some of that got rolled back because, you know, we have really good lawyers in the AMA. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. But, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. So uh, FPV Canada, yeah. like where it is currently, like what are you setting for future goals? Because obviously you're doing rather well in terms of having people get on board. You know, you're doing really good events. So what is the next bar you're trying to get over? The next bar I'm trying to get over is spectators. That's been that's been a huge one for the last two years that I've been really kind of wrapping my head around. Um, I've got a few ideas that we're working through that could make things really cool, and I actually have uh, some some conversations that I'm going to be in uh, next month with Transport Canada um, on how to do this, and uh, and they're super excited. Actually, funny enough, Transport Canada has been awesome. What awesome. is Transport Canada? Oh, so Transport Canada is, is the government. It's oh, the, the, okay. <laughs> it's, <laughs> That's important to know. Okay. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. It's like the, uh, what's the FAA? Uh, no, well, the FAA is private organization, isn't it? Or is it? Owned? No, it's government. FAA is government. Oh, it's government. FAA. Yeah, 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 I guess the, the, yeah, I guess it's definitely like the Canadian version of the uh, FAA. Okay. It regulates all of that stuff for Canada. Uh-huh. So. You know, it's a regulation about airspace, where you can fly, how you can fly with and how far of what and when and, you know, who and what hour, you know, um, that is them. Um, and if it goes in the air, it's, it's under their jurisdiction. So, um, and they caught a lot of flack this year too, but it's, it's definitely, they've been awesome through this whole process of, of getting this stuff set up. And um, I forgot the question. Because I kind of got sidetracked again. Lofty the, goal. Uh, What's the next hurdle? Lofty goal. The next goal. So the the uh, organization of uh, getting more spectators. So I'm having some meetings with them, um, and uh, we're going to try to do some some very cool things to try to incorporate how how we can make it more of a spectator sport. Um, I'll tell you what I won't do again. I'll, I won't pick a giant field to <laughs> to do an event. <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, but definitely I want, I think I want to start more. I, I think I want to start a little smaller. I want to kind of go back to, um, you know, trying to be a little more, uh, focused on, on the right things. Uh, I think, uh, the last two years has been trying to figure out different things and, and how they work and what worked and what didn't. And I mean, there was a lot of things that worked really well this year that didn't work last year and vice versa that worked well last year, but didn't really work as well this year. Um, and, uh, that's, that's, those are the, the things that I want to work on. Um, but for the, the next year, I think it's digging more into the FPV. So, uh, the FPV racing and, and league structure. So we want to get more involved, uh, within the high schools and the universities. Wait, wait, and I think hold on, these hold on, are, hold on, hold on. I, I, I kind of want to, I kind of want to elaborate on that. Uh, the spectator thing a little bit, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, um, like, I, I talk to a lot of guys that go to go to competitions all over the U.S. So, um, one of the things that I've noticed that is the thing that keeps people from coming in is they we don't play enough on the pilot. You know what I mean? The, the, it it really it really comes down to like, how many people in Canada know about Gab? How many people in Canada knows about Ryan Walker? You know, um, those those are the important things yeah. that you need to build on yeah. because those great attitudes, those great showmen, those are the guys that are going to pull in your spectators. The, those people that want to watch racing have no clue of really – right now what it's about but mm-hmm. they can understand how to latch on to a a pilot you know how do you become uh, a favorite pilot now we got all these guys that were on drl this last year and the year before and i've heard some kids go hey do you know that like they'll come up to me and they go oh do you know that guy so and so the one that you know and and uh yeah you know, so that's how they're getting recognition. And, and yes, you know, like my, like my nephew, my nephew says, Hey uncle, you know, 
I, I, I listened to the podcast with Gab on because I, I saw Gab on DRL, you know. Mm-hmm. So so those those things are how like now my nephew is a fan of Gab. You, mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying? So he's when when he's thinking about drone racing, he's going to want to find out more about Gab and how Gab is doing whatever he wants. That's that's the thing you have to build on in an event. Yeah. You have to say, okay, David uh, David uh, Witten is going to be here. Ryan Walker is going to be here. Gab is going to be here. You know, um, so and so Armonic is going to be here. You 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 have to get that going and out into the public and and let the people see who they have to cheer on. You know, you, 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 that that's the thing that I noticed. Like every event so far that has tried to be spectator orientated yeah. has left that part out. Yeah. And that's, well, that's the part that's going to help you build your market. You know I mean? If you, the, you, we're, we're a small air, small sport right now. Small. I mean, we're, I think somebody said multi GP just hit like 112,000, users of uh Comment something like active. that right active active pilots across the right. across the, the world so that's that's a lot when you think about it but when you look at it as against football or basketball or baseball or even tennis has more people involved in it than that across the world you know what i mean and so it's just small so we got to get and how do those tennis how do the tennis guys they build on the characters that's in the in the game, right? That's how I know who Federer is, right? Yeah. That, that's this is how we know who um, Mario Andretti is. This is how we know who um, Dale Earnhardt was. You know that this we they they showcase that. We got to showcase that. If we don't, we're going to continue to be in the little shell that we're in right now. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's actually uh, one of the reasons that when Gab and I were sitting down about um, the sponsorship of the Team Canada and the, the places from this year um, was was exactly that reason. It's like we are we need to build that, that kind of recognition. We need to build those pilots. Um, David did an amazing job at the event, you know, really doing that. Uh, which I'm, which I'm glad of. David's amazing, and um, and he he, and but yes, it's definitely something. Without getting into too much of, of things that I've got in the pipelines right now, um, that is definitely um, very key in in where I want to focus next year, um, as well as what I find is the the difficulty um, is not just that it's the the seeing these things buzz around. Mm-hmm. Um, DRL really did it well because they've got all the different lights and all the different colors and stuff like that. Um, I don't, I didn't feel that we've been at a point yet, um, where I can dictate, I don't want to dictate, um, you know, it's, a, it's the wrong word, uh, where, you know, I, I really want to get a level playing field. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want, I want the pilots to be competing. I want the pilots and the drone to be competing. You know what I mean? But I also don't want to say to people that like, you have to use this drone. Or you have to use this. So we have, you know, these 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 wide ranges of uh, because it's about getting people out and having fun and stuff like that. But uh, but you know, I think that we're we're kind of getting to a part a point that we can start to seriously consider that is you know for at least certain events that they are um, you know spec. Uh, I and, I totally agree, dude. I totally and, agree with you on that. And then we have much more control in how they look and how, you know, what color and, and being able to then tie that into the greater system of, uh, you know, to, to present that up in front, you know, who's first, what's real time, you know, right. um, across everything. Uh, because then you've got this whole broadcast aspect of it. Um, but I think that's something that uh, is, is necessary right now because people go to the course and, and it's funny, the people that were there at the Drone Nationals this year, the people that sat sat in the bleachers, which was actually not the best place to sit. It was actually where the we had the little exhibition set up. And we had chairs out there because you could see the entire course. And um, and a few people you know, went up and figured that out. There was quite a few people at one point up there. Um, but uh, it's, it's how to direct this. And this is, you know, this is where we need to figure out the size of the venue. You know, everybody wants to say we're big, but... 
you know, we're big in our own minds. Right. We're big in our own minds. <laughs> I, I know the feeling on that one. So, yeah. uh, so, can I just convey what I learned in 2017 to you? Maybe you'll maybe you'll get something out of it. Here's what I've learned in 2017. 2017, I learned that goggle bars is a great idea, but it really doesn't work for spectators because what right. happens so. is they'll come up, they'll look at it. They'll feel bad for hogging it, and then they'll either give it to the next person, and at that point, they lose interest because they lose the ability to have the goggles, or yeah. they're too scared to come up to the goggle bar because they have no idea what you're talking about, right? They're they're afraid to look dumb because it's like, hey, come up here and look at the FPV view, and they're just looking at you. It's like, what did he say? What? It's like, huh? It's what? It's like, is that like changing the oil in my car? Because I can't do that. But so <laughs> I'm not into porn. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the concept of is a goggle a bar, unless you have really hot girls working it, which right. th- that does work, by the way. Um, but that does work. That does work. You almost you have to almost give them out and let them have it for the entire day to really work. So the goggle bar idea just doesn't quite fly, for uh, at least from what I've seen. Second thing is is that um, what Elvin said is true. If you have a big name pilot uh, that's confirmed to come, which is kind of iffy, I'm going to be honest with you, because like I've had events where like they sign up and they don't show up, that's and right. you know you're going to look bad if you if you advertise a person and he doesn't show up, you know. So, mm-hmm. but like um, there are certain pilots. And, like, this is entirely dependent on the pilots, and this is the issue. Like, um, like, l- let me contrast two pilots that I know well enough to where hopefully they won't get mad at me if I talk about them. Uh, Gab and uh, one of the local pilots, uh, Paul Nurk, both from DRL, right? Mm-hmm. They're both great pilots. I mean, if you watch them fly, you will be hooked because they're just that good. Because, like... You cannot do what they do in an hour, in a hundred hours. You really have to dedicate in order to do it. Yes. But when it comes to approachability, I give it to Paul. Paul's very approachable and he has a presence when he walks in. Whereas like, like, like Gab can sneak up on me. He's like, how long have you been standing there? (laughs) You know, it's like, he's very unassuming. And for our star powered pilots, uh, they got to get out of that shell. Uh, y- yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually, it's funny because it, it was actually uh, something that came up, uh, I think it was last year. It was actually Gavin and I were talking about it at one point. And it was, uh, and he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm getting there. And, and I, I've seen it. I've, I've definitely seen a huge, huge change uh, in him. Uh, not, not changed in, in that way, but you know what I mean? Like he's definitely become much more open in the last, uh, in the last he's year. He's growing into uh, that a lot. He's growing uh, yeah, into he's that role. Definitely. I, I don't, I don't think it's growing though. I, I think it's just, he's getting more comfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, 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 he's a tactician, you know, yeah. everything he does is tactical. I mean, he's, he, he's playing, uh, the, 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 st- statistic statisticians gambling you know i mean yeah. and it's it's, know, it's because he's dudes like you know he's like wicked crazy right. smart right like, right like, yeah 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 i mean like, most most really if you really look at this industry it kind of you, you i haven't met a real dumbass you know what i mean i i, I mean i'm i'm I, i've met some people that are slow and 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 slow to get things, but I haven't met a real dumbass like you know somebody that just can't fly. You know, it's usually you can't focus, but you know that's that's about it. But um, most of the people, I, what I'm saying is, most of the people in this hobby is smart people. I mean, a lot of a lot of us are attracted to um, this hobby because of the the soldering the yeah, the motor aspects yeah all that technical aspect the fact that you that um you know it beats the air into submission to fly so so that's that's which, which you know touching back on your your comment from earlier about the fpv car and how mainstream this is becoming 
you know, and, and I was even mentioning about the parallels that you see between, you know, the, the, how things change over time. And, and, uh, and I see a major shift happening in this, in this, like, I thought it was going to be this year, but I was completely wrong. It, it totally wasn't. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't even believe now that it'll be complete next year. I think next year will be a really good kind of everybody's like really going to know it's going to be the year after it's going to be 2019. And that's going to be when things like get serious. Um, because I, I mean, let's get, I kind of agree with that. Um, I actually talked about this on a different podcast. It wasn't even on our show. I think it was, I think it was on quad talk, but um, mm-hmm. I talked about how, Last year was the hype year because that's where all the money came, right? And when nobody became millionaires for organizing drone racing events, all that money <laughs> yeah. left, right? And so yeah. this year has been – And then the sponsors just went like, eh, I spent yeah. too much last year. So this year has been a down year even though the events – I mean there has been a few good events. But if you look at it in the grand scheme of things for people that track it, there was significantly less big events. And, well, and and that, yeah, it hurt. So it, it really did. And like, but like the sport didn't die. So that means there's staying power and the sport still grew. Yes. So we left our hype year. We're basically digging out now, which is what you're saying. In 2018, yeah. we're actually starting the My climb God. again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 See, this is this is how I know you're a businessman because you understand this because 2018 is actually going to be just as hard as 2017 because we're actually rebuilding trust. That's what right. we're doing because every 2016 a lot of people promised a lot of stuff and I I heard the yeah. promises and uh yeah, it didn't happen and a lot of people left. Okay? Yeah. So now we're rebuilding trust, hopefully having a better product coming out of mm-hmm. 2018 that's the issue though and this is what yeah. we're talking about this is this is the whole audience thing is that we don't have a good enough product some of it has to do with the technology too because yes we're we're dealing with the technology that's only fun to watch for about a minute and a half and then you have five minutes of nothing and yeah. that, that's the act to be honest, that's the biggest problem that I'm seeing is like I yeah. I do a lot of events around festivals because there's people yeah. around festivals. That's it. They'll stop. They'll watch the racing. And as soon as they come down and we're resetting for the next heat, people they're leave gone. because there's other stuff to do. And it's like, OK, yeah. so it's like yeah. I need something there to buffer keeping their attention because yeah. it, it's not enough. Well, and. And that is that is the true crux of of my year has <laughs> been has been how like to get all of those things in place requires oh, a play. lot of people. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean. Uh-huh. It requires people, and you know, at, at a certain point, you can't expect people to just volunteer and do this shit. You know what I mean? Like you, you can't because for a couple of reasons, I think. Volunteers are are great to help um, in specific things. Um, for you know, maybe a good example. Uh, volunteers are good to help in in specific things around the events to just have an extra pair of hands. But when it comes to the people that you kind of need to start organizing what you're talking about, you not need to start having people that you pay. You need to start having companies that come out and either have to buy into it. Exactly. And people that are going to put the money in right with you on the side say, okay, I'm going to take this part and I'm going to do this. And that's what I focused on a lot this year to try to try to get that. And, and it's been, it's been a really big issue because, you know, the people that are the volunteers are there and I don't expect them to drop everything and, and come out, um, you know, and just drop whatever they're doing when I need something. You know, that's just not fair. Um, I expect to do an event and they can come out and they can hang and we can have fun together and we can do all these things. Um, which meant we, we really are limited in funds to what we can do to make it more exciting. And, you know, it's, it's the real issue. It's like, you know, where do you have it? Finding a location is bloody difficult. Right. You know, still, still, I thought after last year it was going to be like, <laughs> Yeah, people know what it is now. 
I could just be like, look, last year we did the <laughs> Molson Stadium. <laughs> yeah. Nobody cares. It's like, hey, give They're me like, five grand and you can have this spot. And you're like, what? Hold on. That's like some all of, of my quotes, budget. Dude, some of the quotes I got, I was just like, I, I shit myself. Well, I, I, and and I, I, I bet you it wasn't five grand. It was more like oh, 15 the, the or 20. Biggest, the biggest quote that I got was $125,000 for one day. Holy cow. And I'm like, nuts. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> okay, 32 pilots divided by $125,000. <laughs> All right, everybody uh, sign up. $500 a goddamn ticket. <laughs> you know what happened was that guy, he saw like, hey, like they gave away a million dollars in Dubai. This guy's got to have right. money. <laughs> right, right. right? Yeah, it's called oil money. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely the, the whole doing all of that stuff has been the difficulty, um, this year because people are expecting more of an entertainment now. And, you know, if you're, and the way I see it is if I'm charging you to be at the events, like you should just come and fly. That's what you should do. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I try to do that, but it, it means that there's a lot more burden on on me and, and on the people that help and and like I said when I started this if it wasn't for the people that, that did help out for all these things and they were amazing um, we wouldn't have even been able to accomplish it and uh, I'm still recovering <laughs> to be honest I'm, <laughs> I'm exhausted man like we, we uh, should have been, yeah we yeah, need to I, start a a group that says like recovering drone uh, event organizers <laughs> it's yeah. true right like <laughs> And I mean, like, like you even said, like putting on events, it's, it's even for a one day event, there is so much time compared to the time that you spend there, you know, that you have to put in into that going testing the place, making sure the frequencies should have got there ahead of time, make sure the payments are done, make sure that everybody's happy. They've got all the forms and, you know, it's just like all of these things that are all putting together to be organized. It all needs to be, um, needs to be taken care of. And then people come and they're like three hours and they're like, yeah, I burned a lot of batteries. Great. That's great. And phew, gone, you know, and, and you're there to clean up. Um, and some people stay and, and help clean up. But, uh, but for the most part, you know, it's, it's like expected. Right? I stay, I stay, I do stay. I, I'm, I'm one of those guys. Yeah. There's, there's, I, I did notice a big difference in uh, this year to last year of, of that difference of how many people were helping and how many people, um, more or less um more actually and it's uh definitely more people a lot of the younger guys are getting in there too i had a lot of a, lot of, a couple guys that, that came out to the event this year and were just awesome like they were there like it was three hours man when we finished it was pissing rain like downpour downpour and i was that like sucks. we were out there cleaning up the course like soaked to the bone and then i still had to drive two hours back to montreal you know what i mean like you know it was was, uh, uh, so these these guys were out there with us, like really making it happen, and and it was it was very much appreciated. It's it's almost like you know whatever I could do to pay them back, you know. And they're like, no, do another event like this. And I'm like, I don't want to do another event like this. I want okay. it smaller. <laughs> See, Matt, you and I need we, we need to start a, a, a you know a recovering uh, event organizer group, Def- definitely, yeah. because I, I feel your pain. I know every step that you've been through for this year. <laughs> <laughs> and it's tough. Uh-huh. It's tough because, like, the day before, you get no sleep, like three hours of sleep if you're lucky. During the day, Frequencies. yeah, yeah. You're, you're running around fighting fires. And then after the event's over, you have this long drag of cleanup, and then you have your recovery period, and then you start over again. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and I'm already doing another one in uh, December, actually. It's a private, oh, a private event. Um, well, that uh, might be a video game industry. Yeah, oh, it's going nice. to be a micro event. So, yeah. Is that so, a, is that an invitation only? Uh, it is. It's going to be. Yeah, it's a very small one. Um, but it's yeah, it's it's like a video game uh, conference in Montreal that they have every year, and we're huh? featuring featuring drones and stuff like that. And we're having a little micro drone racing track. The Airblade uh, UAV guys are providing us with some uh, some of their awesome micro drones that are just like brushed. Uh, sorry, brushless uh, micro drones that we're going to fly around. We're going to have a course set up in the conference center. And uh, yeah, it's going to be hopefully a good time. We'll have like Ubisoft, Warner Brothers. Yeah, man, that's it. You know, we'll be having their own teams to, to, to fly. So 
That's pretty yeah. cool. Hey, good luck yeah. to you on that. Like when it comes to corporate gigs, having a goggle bar actually makes sense because those people, you can just sit them down. So it's like, no, you can sit here the whole time. Just wear your goggles, be impressed and give me money. Uh, the, the money part is usually really hard, but you know, you can hope you can dream. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but okay, I'm so I have to apologize again. We I think we went on a 20 minute tangent, but it was a very good 20 minute tangent. <laughs> this, it, it was a uh, it was a uh, very good. It was very therapeutic in my opinion <laughs> to yeah, get yeah, all yeah. Of that out. To get that out. It was just like, man, I'm glad I'm glad you, you somebody that feels my pain. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. But you know, FPV Canada, I still think you're on the right track. There's a lot Thank of organization you. there, and you know, like you know, we're, we're gonna look at you uh, and going forward, and hopefully, you can do some groundbreaking stuff. Because if you do, other people will follow. I mean, like there are people just like us who are trying to figure it out, and I think once one of us cracks it, the rest of us, you know, will get on board with you, and uh, hopefully, we can, you know, like you know, all boats rise, uh, you know, well, in, on the tide. That's, that's what we're that's what, what? we're going for. That's it's it. been more like crabs in a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> be quiet. I'm trying to be positive. <laughs> I'm trying to be positive, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling the damn truth. You know, yeah, it's, it's like crabs in a barrel. As soon as you, you pop up and say, oh, I'm going to hold a race right over here, some dipshit come out of nowhere. You can't do that. I said you you can't do that. Shut the hell up. Go sit in the corner. That's a, it's a, it's it's it's. I I think though that it's family. You know what I mean. We're acting like a family. We all go yeah. through the hard times. You know, we all go through the good times, and it's and it's. Uh, I think we're going to be better for it. We're going to shed a little bit of skin again this year. Just as long as Uncle ain't coming over and rubbing you on the kneecaps. Hey. Yeah. No. Okay, we won't go there. So <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about the Canadian Joe Nationals before Elvin yeah. or me derails the conversation yet again. Oh, yeah. sure. Okay, Canadian Joe Nationals. Uh, give us a clarification on what happened the first year because yeah. I understand how things get muddled because everything's like – constantly shifting especially when you're a new sport right it's not like yeah. everybody has written contracts it's kind of like you're gonna do this i'm gonna do that and we're gonna agree and then all of a sudden they, you don't see eye to eye and stuff happens yeah and i mean yeah so to be honest there are parts of it that i still don't know that that, that happened even out of my like with other people um and, uh, and for those, you know, I, I'm truly, you know, if anybody's, I, I know there's a couple of people that are pissed. Um, and you know, I, I apologize. I really honestly didn't mean anything by anything. Um, so the first year, the drone expo was, uh, was actually, we, we came by the RA came to us and we're like, Hey, we want to have the Canadian drone nationals there. Mm -hmm. Now, there is, if I recall back, there was some kerfuffle about that and how that happened even before I got involved, which was between IDRA and Joe Scully and NAFPV and all of this shit. Um, and whatever happened there, I, I don't know. And what I was told, you know, we're not having it. We, we're going to, we want to have it with somewhere and you guys are the only thing that are really running it so we're like we, we want to run it with you and i'm like that's awesome like we'll do it we'll do the canadian drone nationals right great so um so we we did it on, under the montreal drone expo this is the canadian the idra canadian drone nationals never really thought anything more of it um this year uh we had been starting to do planning and it's like well you know let's make this because a lot of people after the first year um, I think there was a lot of, again, it was all that confusion, right? It's like, oh, well, how did he get on the team? And why did he? And I didn't, you know, and, and, and all of this stuff. And it was like, well, okay, you know, that's a fair point. You know, we didn't run events everywhere. It was the one event. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll let's do something bigger. Let's do it across all the different, the different areas. And, and I had a bunch of people after the, the first, um, 
the first one we did come on and say, well, we want to do this and we want to do this. You know, TVRC Wings is Halifax. We've got, uh, you know, uh, the Vancouver guys, Ronald, uh, out there. And, you know, and it was a lot of these guys are, are we were going to run qualifiers and just say, okay, well, let's organize it. And then we can actually make something meaningful where people around the country can see where they stand against the rest of the people in the country. That was it. That's what we wanted to do. We'll call it the, I mean, it was like, at first it was like the Canadian Drone Expo, right? And I'm like, fucking Canadian Drone Expo. Like, you know, it was become like the Canadian Drone Expo Vancouver. And I'm like, you know, we, we did the Drone Nationals last year. You know, the Canadian Drone Nationals. I, I've registered all the domains, the .cas, .coms. I own them all. And it's like... Mm-hmm. You know, like, and then it was like, even the Canadian Drone Prix, I bought, you know, I, I have all those things too. So I'm like, you know, so it's either going to be the Canadian Drone Prix or the Canadian Drone Nationals. And I don't like Drone Prix. I just don't like the sound of it. I like the Canadian Drone Nationals. You know, it kind of sounded very epic. And uh, so, so I kind of changed the name and I said, no, we're going to rebrand this to the Canadian Drone Nationals. Mm-hmm. And then it's not like, you know, Canadian Drone, uh, the Canadian Drone Expo Ottawa is running the Canadian Drone Nationals by FPV Canada. And, you know, it just, it's like, you know, uh, at that point. So it was just like Canadian Drone Nationals and Canadian Drone National Qualifiers. You want to qualify? We're going to put you on a leaderboard to everybody else and we're going to, we're going to get you up there and we're going to do it. And, um, and yeah, we, we just started with that. And then I, I remember I was, I was, this is, this is this year, man. Uh, it's because uh, so much happened around this time. Um, you know, I was talking to Joe and he was like, uh, cause I made a post in February. It was right before the, um, the, uh, what was it? The Super Bowl, the Super Bowl weekend, because I had, I had spent the weekend, um, finalizing the logo and I was like, yeah, this is perfect. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, <laughs> this is great timing. And so I'm like, put it out there. And I've always, I always do try to consider how I write things and, you know, how things are and, you know, just to make sure that you're not, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I really don't. Like, I want everybody to work together. Like, it's not, you know, this is, this is something that we can all kind of benefit from. And we can. We can I think we can, you know, um, and I still, I still think we can. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I did the Canadian Drone Nationals, second annual Canadian Drone Nationals, because we did the first Canadian Drone Nationals last year and we're, and we're doing it with IDRA and, mm-hmm. you know, and the whole IDRA and multi GP thing and how we got stuck in the middle of that one. We, we, oh, I want to yeah. touch on that. I want to no. touch on that one, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to, oh, we're going to talk oh, about that. Oh, okay. So, okay. um, but, uh, yeah, so the, uh, so I, I put it out. <laughs> Joe, Joe wrote on the board. I'm like, Fuck up. You know, wow. So I called him up. I'm like, dude, like, I'm sorry. Like, what, what, like, what's going on? And uh, he's like, well, we did the Canadian Drone Nationals. I'm like, you d- did? And, uh, and I'm like, but we did the IDRA Canadian Drone Nationals. And, um, and he says, well, the Fat Shark Frenzy was labeled the Canadian Drone Nationals. And I'm like, what's it? It was the Fat Shark Frenzy. And I'm like, everybody calls it the Fat Shark Frenzy. I didn't know. And, uh, and then so so I uh, so I'm like ah, I'm sorry I'm sorry and he's like okay no problem you know no I'm not following it's like good so I just I was like you know sorry I didn't mean to step on anybody's toes but you know, we did this and and we're moving on so um, I continued on with the Canadian Drone Nationals and I think for the most part um, I've I've had a few people that are that are a little pissed and confused um, and uh, you know it's it's not intended but it's it is what it is. You know, it's, it's unfortunate. It's, uh, but I mean, legitimately we ran the Canadian drone nationals last year too, as well as we did this year. So I'm looking at it as the second annual, um, because I want to do this every year and I want to do it. And the idea was to start doing it around the country, um, in different place, uh, because we did it in Montreal last year. I wanted to do it, uh, Ottawa, we figured for the 150, uh, and then that was a perfect opportunity. And I really was, uh, I want to consider, um, we're looking at places out on the West coast, uh, for next year to do the finals, but I'm really starting to question, 
just because of size, um, whether that's the best um, right now to do something like that because it's you know a, a very big distance. Anyway, that's that's a completely side topic, but yeah. So I mean, the, the Canadian Drone Nationals were the Canadian Drone Nationals, I and mean, it's the second annual Canadian Drone Nationals. We ran, you know, an IDRA Challengers Cup event as well, and we tried to do something for Canadians so that they could have meaningful events and so they can compare themselves to how they stand against other people in Canada from across the country, and that's what nice. I wanted to do. So we yeah, had uh, over a hundred pilots fly in Canada. That's pretty awesome. And I can totally relate to because I am a person that wants to support all people, right? So I run a whole bunch of multi GP races. I also ran a Challengers Cup. I, you know, I don't run a Nationals for the United States. I, there's no way I'm stepping into that can of worms. <laughs> Not in the United States. That would be an ugly can of worms. <laughs> but, um, like, you know, uh, I think everybody knows, like the IDRA and multi GP do not get along. the The history of that is long, winding, and I'm not sure if the truth will ever be completely, totally known. But let's just say people don't like each other, and like I know you guys got stuck in a pickle for that one because it's. Uh, I heard the story. Shit, we've been stuck in the pickle. What you talking about? Shit, I was trying to be right. nice, and so yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, we really did. No, we really, we really did. Um, and it was, I can go, go into like conversations that happened, but I, I was definitely in many conversations and I was like, look, we, I wanted to work um, with MultiGP this year. We had MultiGP banners up at all of our events we've run. I mean, the first year Canadian Drone Nationals were, were actually promoted as a MultiGP event and an IDRA event. Didn't have a clue. They were like, you know, no idea. Um, didn't really care. It doesn't really. It, did, it, does, it, did, but, it happened know. after that, though. The, yeah. That's where the shit, yeah, the shit but, hit the fan after that. Yeah. So, I mean, but but I look at it as luck. We're all we're all trying to fly. I'm not I'm not picking sides. You know, I'm I'm we're, we're Canada here. We're trying to do what means you know what we can do for our our community here and so, make it. Sometimes it's not bigger. good to be in the middle. <laughs> that's it. <clears throat> but sometimes sometimes you find yourself there. Right. Um, and you know what? I'm not. Uh, you know, I, I like to, but I'm not going to pick sides. I'm not going to pick sides. And, um, unless I have a good reason to, um, and the good reason is, you know, unless I feel the same way about, you know, whatever, one or the other, it doesn't matter what somebody feels or pushes me to, to feel. But, uh, yeah. So, so this year we, we were talking and we're like, yeah, let's do this. Like I want, I want FPB Canada to be pushing all of the, you know, all of the events for, for Canada, for multi-GP. And, uh, I was like, but, you know, I just want FPV Canada's logo represented across all of it. Mm -hmm. Get recognition, you know, credit where credit's due. That's all I was asking. And then we'll, we'll, let's do something. So the CFDR, so in 20, 2016, um, when everybody was in Hawaii, uh, for the for the finals, I went to Vancouver. That was um, last year. This time, right now. Yeah, that's true. It was right. Oh uh, well, we we Almost. most yeah. guys had already left though. Well, twenty fifth. Yeah. yeah, so it was yeah. about this time last year. I had a a, a meeting. Um, I went to Vancouver for three days to meet up with uh, a buddy uh, who's now a buddy, Ryan Stephan, out of the West Coast Drone Racing League. Uh, amazing guy. Uh, doing some great stuff, and uh, we we got connected about doing something called the. We we basically sat down, and in, in that time that I was there, we basically I went to Vancouver, and we just sat in his living room, and we we, we flew you know teeny loops all around the house, and we we had a projector, and we, we hashed out kind of what we wanted for the Canadian Federation for drum racing, and and made it something. Um, and over that time, uh, I've been building a lot of relationships with. Uh, Transport Canada with all the different uh, MAC, which is like the uh, the, the, the Micro Model Aeronautics Association of Canada. It's like the, not, is it the AMA? Yeah, AMA. 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 Yep, yep, yep. And, um, and uh, so we've been kind of trying to set that as, because I kind of felt that, uh, you know, part of it was like, we need something for, for everybody, right? Like this is the, this is where we can all have a voice and it's truly, it's not, it's, it's, 
it's not really pushed one way or the other. It's like truly a community voice. Um, and it's a non-for-profit organization. It's run by the members that's, you know, that does all this. So that, so Ryan Stefan, um, had made, uh, and, and full made, the, made the deal with the idea, right? Like he got connected up and said, let's, let's push it through the, uh, the Canadian Federation for drone racing because we have the rules and regulations. We've got the, we've got the, uh, insurance, we've got all the stuff that we can do. And, mm-hmm. and so he brought them to the table and then we sat down and we're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, we'll do two events this, you know, across Canada. Do one in Vancouver and one, in, one, on, one in the West, one in the East. Calm down, Western competition, Eastern competition. And that was great. This is all happening during the time I'm talking to TGP. And then all of a sudden it comes out, it's like, uh, so IDRA went and posted something, but they posted FPV Canada and, and you know, FPV Canada and uh, IDRA, you know, and, and we're like, we're, we're it's CFDR. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like, yeah. This isn't FPV. This is CFTR. <laughs> and that went out. And I got an email. Two days later. What's this? What's this I see? FPV kind of and uh And I explained, I'm like, yeah, like this is the CFTR. We put this together. We'll do this. We'll, we'll run an event. And we'll do, we're going to do one there with the West Coast guys and West Coast drone racing league and FPV Vancouver. And we're going to do one here with, you know, at the nationals and we're going to, you know, whatever. No, no, basically I was, I was given a very stern ultimatum. I'm either with them or not. I'm with IDRA or I'm not. And I'm like, fuck guys, like two years. <laughs> We've been like, huh? And that was it. Uh, the next day I said, guys, this is where I've always, I uh, will, we shouldn't get pulled into this. Like this isn't between us and like, this has nothing to do with, with this. And, and I got blamed, you know, together. And now you add the, the name Canadian drone nationals. Then you add dealing with IDRA and then all of these other things. I'm the fucking bad guy. So it's like, you know, <laughs> I'm the guy to blame. So then uh, IDRA, so, so multi GP said, Nope, I don't want to do with it. Don't want to deal with you as long as you're with the idea. Right? Nothing to do with you. You're with the enemy. Wow. And I was like, holy shit. Which then they proceeded to call every one of my chapters and gave them an ultimatum and said, you're either with FPB Canada or you're with multi-GP. And if you don't switch over, we're going to shut down your multi-GP accounts. And all of my chapters turned around and went. Wow. <laughs> not one, not one did they switch. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that we're we're golden and we, we don't make mistakes and haven't done stuff like we've definitely done that. But, but I'm so proud of the stuff that we've built and that, you know, that we're just not going to bow to, to some crap that's coming from another country that has nothing to do with us. And I'll stand by that, you know, as long as I, hey. you know, because we had nothing to do with us and I still get fallout from it. Yeah. And, and uh, I understand that completely because I've heard stories and, you know, back at the very beginning, I said, the entire Canadian, you know, community marches in one direction. This is what I'm talking about. This is the because, yeah. like, I've already heard some of this, right? And this is why I always say, like, in terms of organization, Canada is actually ahead of Way the United ahead States of us. because, yeah. like, you guys communicate so well across still a very large country. Okay, I mean, and like, you, you guys think uniformly too. You know, it's like you, you guys are not making waves as individuals you guys are making waves as a unit and that's what makes you guys so valuable you know um as a commodity in canada i mean that's that's why those companies are investing in you the bank and all of those they're investing because they see and they know that you guys are functioning as a team Mm -hmm. and that's what's going to get the whole thing rolling and keep it rolling right is the fact that so many of y'all want to succeed now, just to be clear, though, like when it comes to like just for our listeners say as an organizer, IDRA, multi GP, you're just another league that I'm trying to help, you know, and right. like at a, like there's so many events going on. You guys should be able to split it up 
and play ball. Because, like, literally, like, no offense to multi-GPR, the IDRA, but you guys don't support the chapters as much as you think you do. At the end of the day, it's a lot of guys doing a lot of free work that's making it happen, that's growing your pockets. Because without the guys that are doing the work for free, doing all of this advertising, communities, country. investing in their own communities, like, it, like your name doesn't matter, okay? Right. You know, you, it, you could be XBY League Ooh. and, like, Jerk it off. won't matter because you're not giving mm-hmm. us money. You know, you might give us a few flags, but, like, come on. It's like, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's a few flags. Dude. Like, you really want to help us, you want my loyalty, you know, give me 10 grand for an event. Okay, then you can talk about loyalty yeah. until then. Yeah, it's like, because right. that'll take a lot of stress off putting on an event. Exactly. Right. It's, it's like just covering the venue costs and your insurance. Yeah, get, costs the, get, the, get, get it, lock me in on a venue. Shit. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, from there, it's, it's just so much easier. Yeah. But like, it, like I said, you know, like, the rising tide raises all boats. Or I, I screwed up that quote. But w- what I'm saying is that <laughs> everybody benefits from a good race. You know, it, right. your, your name doesn't have to be on it to benefit from it. It really doesn't, no. you know. Yeah, that's true. But sorry, I, I, no, I went on a little bit on a tangent. No, no, I mean, that was really it. I mean, I, I, I have even still reached out since uh, even as, as recently as a couple months back. And I just said dude can we just put the shit behind us now yeah can we start over and it was just basically it was still the idea rate for, for us and i was just like All right, whatever and and i mean there are people that i were that i was talking to to try to get uh to, that i really did want to work with and and they're doing some great things i love what they're doing i, I mention them every time it's the niagara guys um and i, I forget i keep drawing a blank at, on the moment with uh with them uh, with their actual name, but they're they're the Niagara the Niagara Group. They're they're running a uh, multi GP and they're running uh, they've got a Mac field and they're they're really doing some great stuff. And um, I've reached out and I've talked to them a few times and basically said like, hey, let's let's do something. And then they were like, well, as long as this multi GP thing is going on, like, we're, we're we're just gonna we're gonna do our own thing. And uh, I'm like, all right, it's cool, man. Like, I don't I don't blame you. Like. <laughs> It's not a great position to be in. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I can I can tell you that you you you, uh, you get into position to to like for me like with with my group we're we're about the no charging thing, right? Yeah. You know, where where we fly at, we really can't charge. You know, it's part of it's part of the city's thing. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, once we start charging, then we have to act as a whole another entity, right? Exactly. So, um, w- w- it's it's always free. It's always open to the public. We we walk you through how to learn how to fly and all that stuff, and exactly. and help newbies get 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 some airtime so that they may be competitive at a race, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Depending on them. So, but this whole trying to trying to fit in a one group and answer to all the other groups is is impossible for us you know and um it's the thing that holds us back and i and i i totally believe in the fact that part of growing this sport is making it somewhat eliteness you know what i mean where you have your you're going to have your elite pilots, you know, let, let's just say right now, DRL guys are all the elite pilots. Let's yeah. just say they're, they're, they're the ones that have the most recognizable um, opportunity right now yeah. because they're, they're on TV. People know who they, some of them are, they recognize them. So those are, let's just say those are right now the top known pilots um, across the world because of the TV show. Now, how do you get a part of that? You know, and and if if you don't fit in the group, then you don't fit in. And yeah. That's kind of shitty. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. Everybody's like, everybody's like, so do you want to you want to take on Daryl? I'm like, no. 
No, nobody <laughs> should. Nobody should even be trying to take over anybody's position. Yeah. We, you should be out trying to make your own way because, yeah. th- like, like why I have said before, why I have said this. He said that. You know, and I agree with him about the fact that there's different types of racing. You know, there's, you know, there's Formula One, there's there's NASCAR, there's Sprint Car, there's there's all there's drag racing. There's somebody's got to take the realm of the the reins and 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 whip that into shape so that they can utilize it and make it a sport. You know what I mean? And depending on who gets their hands or opportunity. And what kind of help they get from the community around them is what what, what we'll see. But I, I still I do believe that we do need some elite pilots or to to, to broadcast and where people want to show go. right. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And part That's... of the fault is also the leagues, right? Because we have like multi GP and IDRA are the most recognizable in terms of brand name, but they are by far not the only leagues out there okay there are many more and like i can go on forever but here the the thing is is that uh like elvin said in car racing there's a humongous variety Mm -hmm. because they talk to each other and they know hey you know what i'm nascar i'm not gonna go after formula one you know can those two bang their heads against each other and you know try to kill each other of course they can but you know what it doesn't really help them so it's like Can we do that in Joan Racing? It's like IDRA. Figure out a category you want to fit in. Go that direction. Focus in on it. Multi-GP. Figure out your category. Go in that direction. And then as the organizers, it's like, I will organize because I want to go in this direction. Or I will organize because I want to go in that direction. Or I will help all of you and I'll just organize you know, multiple yeah. events, which is generally what we do anyways. Because we right. need to do multiple events. Yep. that's where I hope they will eventually head, you know, when, I don't know, the steam blows over. Because, like, that's what we need right now. You know, it's like we don't have pilots that are specialized right now. They're right. kind of just everything. I, I don't think that's a good thing right now because yeah. we're not letting in new talent because they're all fighting for literally 10 spots, you know. But in car racing, there's literally thousands of spots because there's well, thousands right. of different types of racing. That's it. 10 or 15 different leagues. Yeah. yeah. Which is, which is, uh, which is a, a great kind of, you know, uh, return to what we were talking about originally about, um, about, uh, how, where, where I'm positioning the professional and, you know, mm-hmm. recreational and professional. It's, it's, I think it's, it's not in the professional in the, in, and I look at professional as, uh, DRL, you know, that, that, they do a good job. Like they really do. Like I would love to, I'd love to set up TRL in Canada. Oh yeah. I'd love, I'd be the guy. DRL in Canada. Okay. I will say this though. Here's the thing though. DRL does great for promoting the sport, but unfortunately they don't do great for promoting the pilots because like they don't get their brand. They don't get the pilots brand name out there as much as I hoped they would to be honest, because they're not but growing you know, the pilots. I don't know if I, I think, I think I, I know what you're saying, but in the same sense, I've heard a lot of people that are like, Oh yeah, it's on the DRL and blah, blah, blah. And, and I hear you know, Gab and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm like, okay, like that's, that's kind of, it's kind of cool. Um, I think it's because it's still not that widespread. Like I said, we're, we're still, we think we're big in our own minds. Mm. We're still have not hit that point where we are, you know, common name. Like, right, right. True, I still, I, dude, I still ran into it this year. It was like, I was asking schools. We had schools that we were talking to for like months. We had workshops and all of this stuff set up. And all of a sudden, right at the last minute, parents were like, the drones are dangerous. <laughs> Damn. I'm, I'm literally not kidding. You know what I mean? And I'm like, right. I thought we were past that. You know, like I really did. Maybe I was, I was, I was blind uh, or I was too into it to see that, that I, but I truly did think that we had actually moved beyond that now. And, and it was a, it was a wake up call. Like it really was, you know, it was like, wow, we're, we're not out of it yet. <laughs> you know? Hey, I, 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 I agree because like, see, I, I take this thing with me the last week. 
I've gone in places that if I crack my five inch out and fly, people go, you know, yeah. What, the, what the hell is that? Hey, are you supposed to be flying that here? You know, right? but yeah. this thing, dude, like I can, you could be walking on the path and you see this thing go over your head. You're not even worried about it. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, it's look, so cute. It's cute. Yeah. It's cute. Oh, holy <laughs> shit. It's doing right. like 60. That's right. Yeah. This thing will do 60. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I totally understand. Oh, so let me qualify what what I mean by DRL can do more is that like uh, all of the DRL pilots still go out and they, you know, run events locally, not only to keep their own skills up, but also just to be, you know, uh, out in the public and have, you know, content, you know, be the face of something. I would expect like like literally like if I were to see Gab. Like, DRL should be showering him with so many freaking T-shirts. Like, we shouldn't be able to see him because he should be giving out those, like, DRL T-shirts like candy. To the point point where, like, if I walk into a stadium and everybody's wearing a Gab DRL T-shirt, I would be wondering what the heck am I missing and why ain't I wearing a free DRL T-shirt. That's kind of the stuff I'm talking about. It's like... Like, come on! Like, that's that's what you that's what we really need. It's like, right. hey, True. here's a free T-shirt. You know, wear it and like promote me, my brand name, and like Stickers. you're happy to just get a free T-shirt. I would stickers, you know? yeah, stickers, yeah. stickers. I love stickers. I do stickers, dude. I've been doing stickers for years. Who doesn't like stickers, man? I had a sticker book. Like, I'm from the generation that had st- collected stickers and. <laughs> You know, it's like garbage pail kids and, and, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going to stop this. Okay. We're going to talk about the Canadian <laughs> drone nationals. Like I said, we are because okay, like, okay, otherwise okay, it would right. be like three hours <laughs> instead of two and a half. Right, you're right. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Canadian <laughs> drone nationals uh, okay. version two, version two yes. in version auto. Two. And now yes. we know that you were, uh, we just did it actually. And you were at a baseball field. Yes. And you were talking about how you would never want to do this again. Why, why didn't you like the baseball nah, field? I know. Don't get me wrong. The venue and the people were amazing. They let us do so much stuff there, man. Like they were, uh, they were really easy to work with compared to a lot of the other stuff I've dealt with. And, and I mean, I, I really do kind of hats off to them about that. The problem was um, there were two uh, big issues with that place. Um, being as big as it is. Um, the one was that the course, uh, based on the Transport Canada regulations that we had to get for the, the low-level air race SFOC, which is a special flights operations certificate, all these acronyms, and LL, what is it? LLRC SFOC. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, but uh, we had to have certain distance and certain padding and all of this stuff. And, um, so we had to keep people at a certain distance uh, away from everything. So it meant the course had to go out. And because we didn't want the people to be crashing into the diamond and get the dirt and everything into their drones, like the house, how much would that suck? We used the outfield because we had giant nets because it's baseball time, right? Had giant nets. And that was one of the reasons for like, look at all the netting, right? Like we don't, we don't have to deal with netting. Oh <laughs> yes. That is so good. Oh yes. Like, like, like it was man. If I had if if I had to do all that and deal with the netting, I think I probably would. I, I probably wouldn't have made it through the weekend. But uh, but I know the uh, yeah. So we we didn't, and that was that was a that was a huge selling point of that location. Um, but because it's on the outfield and everybody's in on the infield, or is it by the, you know, the catcher catcher or the home plate? That's home what plate. it is. Really good in, in baseball, um, but uh, it took a long time when people crashed. Like a long time. Oh uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. You like, know, and I mean, yeah, and it was it was threatening rain, so they're like, we shouldn't go on. The, and they blocked off the, the 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 field the day before of like the actual diamond, and they're like, mm, you can't go on that. We just resawed it. It's going to rain. It's going to be mud. You, you can't go on there. So we're like, okay. So not only could we, we could not go straight through. We had to go down the side to get past it, and then cut over, or go out this way and then cut over. And I mean, man, we lost so much time. 
it was so bad. Like, like it was, I think the biggest, the biggest, um, I would say biggest underestimation that I had made for this whole event. Um, because it meant that we had a very long day of flying. And then on top of it, um, the weather was threatening. Um, so, uh, you know, it was, we had no, no cover. <laughs> it was the time of the year. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like, you know, we had this huge location, people running out that way. Um, you know, we had the threat of rain and always like trying to look at, do all this. So I think, if I did it again, especially at that time of the year, it would be a smaller venue and it would be uh, covered. Covered is nice. The The problem is, and this is like, like the, okay, first challenging question. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, what dun. I've learned is, and because I've run in stadiums, like uh, we this year we ran an event at a NASCAR stadium, which is, you know, really beautiful yeah. venue. Looks great and oh, all in was- the background. Yeah, yeah, that was you. I, I saw that yeah. one, man. Oh, hey. Yeah, so now... I like your work. Well, thank you. I, I like your work. And one of the things that comes with the stadium, no matter how open it is, I don't, still don't know why. It's annoying as hell is that the noise floor is really bad. So, like, some channels, you just get really terrible video. It's like... It's like, hey, dude, I feel for, sorry for you, but uh, you're going to have to fly through it because that's your channel. <laughs> yeah, actually, and, and that, that's a good point. That was, that was, I think, the second big issue we had that was unforeseen is um, we went and tested there. I was there twice. You know, I drove from Montreal, went down there, went to the stadium. I took measurements. Of it. We flew. We had a couple of people flying. We tested all this testing. Everything was crystal clear. It was awesome in the middle of the summer when the skies are clear and there's no cloud in the sky and the sun's out and everything's great. Um, we got there and uh, we had no left channels. We had entirely <laughs> like it would not work. Left would not work. Wow. Left, period. So it was like, we just lost half our channels, you know, and that's, that was, that sucked. Oh yeah. That, that, that made a long Friday. Um, but we did, we, we had the good thing is we were right to 11 o'clock every night. So we, we let people fly right until they shut the, we literally till we shut the lights off and people were still at their fly. <laughs> so <laughs> yep. yeah, man. Like I said, the stadium was great for it, but so that, that was good. But yeah, the, so frequency is definitely a big issue. Um, man, I can't wait for HD and get rid of all this crap. Like, come on. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Yeah, man. Make this, make this smaller. Get it on my drone. Make it affordable. Like, come on. Dude, VTXs, <laughs> man, they are the bane of every organizer because like it is the voodoo magic that just will not be solved. I don't, I don't understand it. It just, it's like every day is different. Like literally you'll show up one day. This works. Show up the next yeah. day? Mm-hmm. Nope. Sorry. Yeah, and then and then I got a few people that were pissed. They were like, well, you should have planned your frequencies. I'm like, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I was what planning? You, what do you yeah. think? I just I just first day? It's like, you know? <laughs> Every day I was like, yeah, sleep, just turn them all on. Yeah, exactly. But uh, but no, I mean, because of those two reasons, um, I think it, it really hurt the flight time uh, of this, this event that we had. Uh, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, there was definitely some people that were expressed their displease on the amount of batteries that they burned. And this is something that to date I had never, not one person has ever said to me. So I take that very seriously. Um, you know, uh, and that's actually contrary, you know, uh, it's, it's, what I have always made sure I always want to make sure the pilots get good batteries, but because of these frequency issues and the size of the field, it just like what turned out to be something that should have taken a two, two minute turnaround took five or more. You know yeah. I, mean? I understand. <laughs> more. You and know? like, you're not the only one that I've heard this from, right? I keep track of a lot of the major events. Every one of them 
underestimates how long it takes to run their entire roster for a day. And like, you know, I'll turn on the FPV feed and they'll still be going. And I'm like, it's 12 o'clock. They got another two hours. Yeah. Okay, I'm going yeah. to bed. <laughs> yeah, man. That's it. And because everybody wants to do these great big venues. And I think I kind of got sucked into that idea too, that it had to be this giant venue. And, and it wasn't so much the giant venue as so much as it was um, being close to a city center. Um, and that's always been something that I've been very cute with. Um, it makes things harder. I'm not going to lie. Like it, it definitely has meant I've had to really get up there and, and push, but it's starting to pay off. I got people calling me now going, I have a space. Do you want to fly here this winter? I'm like, mm-hmm. yes, I do. <laughs> you know, that's but, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and I think it's getting there. Right. And, and that's part of, you know, I think what FPV Canada, we wanted to do, we wanted to have a voice across Canada. You know, We wanted mm-hmm. people to, to put all the resources together for the greater good. And to, to really push this thing out. So all of the chapters that came in um, either put in a monetary amount of money or they put in their own resources uh, in some way, whether that was through social media or that was through um, product or that was through sponsorship in some way. Like everybody, everybody came on and paid um, to be into it so that we could build that out. And it, I mean, it's very, it's, I can say, it's very socialist, I guess, but uh but it, it worked, you know what I mean? Um, it's a community, man. It's a community. And, yeah, you yeah, know, everybody and, has to chip in. That's how it works. Yeah. And, uh, but, but, uh, you know, it's definitely turned people off as well. Um, and, and I think the, the thing that I would, I don't know if I would do, I, I wouldn't do anything different, but I think for next year, we need to do something different. It's changing every year. And if we don't change with it, then it's going to be, uh, Hey, if you don't adapt, you get left behind, right? That's it. That's yep. it. Now, did you so, follow the multi or not multi? Sorry, the IDRA format for yes. The yeah, we had a separate race on the Sunday. Okay, yeah. so yeah. like you did their timing and yep. how how they did that. It's like you know what? No, sorry, Justin, but man, that is the most pain in the ass format to <laughs> run <laughs> ever. We ran it too, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I created an Excel spreadsheet. It was funny. I was talking to him. I hear you, dude. I was even calling him. I'm like, can you just give me the points? And you just give me the final points. I'm like, no, like how they add up. Because I've read it. I've read your 32 page document. Right. <laughs> I've had I, pilots I had at my place. event correct me because they understood the sentence better than I did. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I just didn't understand that <laughs> sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so it was it was funny, and I I, I was like, here I created an Excel. I'm, I love Excel, you know. It's it's like the the, the organized, like the kind of the structural person, and and as well as like the, the kind of the creative, like can kind of decorate it and make it kind of pretty. So I love Excel. I love I love to create these massive things, engines that do things in Excel. And I created a uh, a system where I could track that by each pilot. But I had to be on it. it meant I had to be there, you know. With with Shammy going like give me the time and, and I gave it to all the different chapters and uh, a bunch of them used it some of them didn't and they found it very difficult to run without it but uh, I kind of adapted I, I I derived it from the FPV Canada version that I was making and then I adapted it for him so all I did I just filled out the times I made sure that they all kind of went out and then I handed it to him and I said tell me what the points are. Because uh, and and he did it, and it made it a lot easier. And I remember when the first time I showed him, he said, "This is cool, man. Can <laughs> I is... <laughs> <laughs> can I use this?" <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, go ahead. It's on Google Drive. <laughs> you know, by all Dude. means. So, so like, it, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. No, no. So yeah, basically, just to kind of shut that down, it meant that I could just literally filter, and then I knew exactly who was supposed to go where. If I run another IDR event next year, I'm going to be like, "Hey, can I have that Excel spreadsheet?" <laughs> because it was annoying. <laughs> it was annoying. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. But so, did you split Switch. up your days for specific yeah. events? Is that how it went? Yes, we did. It wasn't the original intent. Um, we did that kind of last minute, um, and that was because of the rain, uh, because of the threat of rain. It was really so. How I originally had it set up was. Uh, Friday was practice day. It was like, we got to get issues worked out. There's always stuff that things aren't going to be ready. We, we need to make sure. And then it's just kind of like practice time. Right. And then 
And then we were just going to run like a little qualifier for anybody who wanted to, to kind of do it at the last minute and uh, kind of get in there and fill some of the spots that some of the guys from Vancouver just couldn't, couldn't come so far. Right. And, um, and so we, we did that on the Friday and, uh, and then the Saturday was supposed to be in the morning. Um, the Canadian drone nationals, uh, qualifiers, all the qualifying heats. And then we're going to do the IDRA in the afternoon, um, all the qualifying heats. So then all we had to do was run the finals on Sunday for both events. And then, uh, we were going to do some wing racing in between for a couple hours to kind of showcase some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so a week before the weather looked like oh, Sunday is going to be downpour and Saturday night is going to be rain. And it's like, what happens if I can't finish both races? You're screwed. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Like, and then it was like, what am I going to do? Like, um, truly though, ultimately it was, a, I think it was better that we did it the way we did. Um, I would have been so screwed had we done it the other way. I underestimated the, the qualification times. I would have, we would have been like till four in the morning if, if we had to do that. And then the next day would have been like, okay, we're done. You know? Um, so, so I had to make a decision of, of, uh, doing the drone nationals or the IDRA. I said, well, this is Canada and this is the drone nationals and this is what it's going to be. Uh, and you know, uh, we'll run, we'll run them rain or shine. Um, hopefully we, you know, Saturday looks like it's going to be good. Friday is going to be okay. And, uh, Saturday and then Sunday became the IDRA challengers cup. And I sent all that stuff out, um, after and, and to all the pilots and, and everybody that was involved and, uh, kind of started promoting it that way, which was good. Um, because Saturday, funny enough, um, it was supposed to rain Saturday night. We walked out of there. The lights went off in the stadium at 11 o'clock because by law of the city, we had to let them off by, the seven, by 11 o'clock. Five minutes after we shut off those lights, it started to rain on, so, fri- on, on Friday. Sorry, on Friday. Not, the FPV gods was with you. They held off the rain until you left. And then yeah, no, I'm sorry. It was, I'm sorry. It was, yeah, it was Saturday because Friday was okay. It, it just didn't, it was like a little sprinkle. But yeah, Saturday, it was like 11.05. It was like it started to rain. And I mean, it wasn't a huge rain, but it, it rained. And it rained all night. Ouch. And uh, yeah, it rained all night. <clears throat> wow. Um, and then like Sunday, you still ran? Sunday. Sunday, yeah, it was raining when we got up. It was raining when we got to the field. It was raining until about 11 o'clock. Um, so we got a really late start on, on, uh, on that. But we were less pilots, so... And, and so I called Justin. I'm like, man, it just stopped raining. We're going to do this. And we're about here. Like, is there any way that maybe we can remove one of the qualifying heats to make sure that we actually get through this? Because my worry is that we're not going to get through this. You know what I mean? Like, if if we do this all, like, there is a chance that we will get to the, the finals and we won't finish it. And And he's like, Hey, if we do that though, um, then people are going to lose out on points. We can't do that. <sighs> okay. So I said, well, look, we're not, we're not a full 32 or 20 for this. So I just ran everybody together because the first four, as you know, are qualified, right? Yeah. It's better times and, <clears throat> and then whatnot. And then you rearrange. So I was just like, we're doing six groups. <clears throat> I think that's what we were doing. The math, right? And we did six groups. And then, but when we got to the primaries, uh, sorry, what I call, I, I was calling that the primaries, but, uh, sorry, the timing, the timing were the four and for the IDRA, it was the, the qualifying, the qualifying mm-hmm. round right. where you had to run it as if it was a 32 person race because we were over 16. So then we had to run the big bracket. Event. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to run empty, empty spots to realign everything. And, uh, and then, so I was like, is there any way we can condense that? And I was like, no, we really shouldn't because uh, people won't get points. And uh, I'm like, oh, okay, we're just going to do it and we're going to see what happens. And uh, we ran it, man. Like it was, it was, we were, by the end of it, we were like, go, go, go. And it was definitely like, a, it was a much more stressful day, uh, actually, you know, um, because we, we were fighting the rain. You could see it, man. Like it held off for, not for an hour though. It did rain in the middle of the day. Everybody went for lunch, but uh, 
but it literally, and again, I was so impressed within 15 minutes of us finishing, it was like the heavens opened up. It was like, <laughs> dude, it's still coming down so hard. Like, uh. I'm just thinking, you know, I am not a religious guy by any means, but I was like, some, somebody was trying to, you know, it's like somebody was it. looking out for me and all the effort that I put in, at least I got done. Right. And That's everybody's it. religious. And when you slam your hand in the damn door, <laughs> I, <laughs> That's one thing good about the uh, the IDRA breakdown is that towards the end uh, the heat's getting faster because you're eliminating people. So yes. it's like it's right. it gets going faster, and yeah. it's like okay, come on, get through. Okay, you're you're yeah. in the next one. Change, go, change go, your go, channel. Go, go. Change your channel. Yeah. What? You can't change your channel because you put your button in the wrong spot. What was? What were you thinking? Yeah, I've had yeah, those man. conversations. Yeah. 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 I was I was definitely I was definitely barking out on, on the Sunday. I was tired by that point. I mean, we had been there since Thursday, and then we still had to close up. And there were threatening rain. We had to, you know, I mean, we got a baseball stadium. We literally just packed it all up that day again. Packed it all up, threw it in the back of the trucks, drove back to Montreal. People drove back to Ottawa, Toronto, wherever they were coming from. Everybody left. So it was it was. Uh, yeah, I think I got home at about eleven o'clock that night. Um, That's I just, tough. I man. Yeah, I parked the truck in a buddy's uh, uh, warehouse. I'm like, <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I am wasted. It's like I'll I'll pack a week from now. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> That's exactly it. Uh, yeah. I I know that feeling just as well, and um, it's one of those things where like like uh, you you just try to make your life simpler with track design because you know you're gonna have to pack it, and the worst part is to unpack it and sort it again. <laughs> Flags, man. We had so many flags. And the the day after we set everything up on Thursday, and the day we got up, we arrived Friday morning. There was like a windstorm or something. Man. They wiped everything out. Wiped the entire field. Just knocked it all over. All of our gates. All of our everything. Like, oh, it was so brutal. And then we literally took all the time to set that up again and go out and fill water bags and you know. And, I know the uh, field. Yeah. Like I. Brutal. I love big obstacles, but they're like yeah. big sails. So like yeah. literally like you need like 200 pound rope staked down four times over and this wind will still eventually knock it over. It's like, it's That's relentless. It. And that was the funny thing. It's like the last two races of the IDRA, the wind's coming in so bad. It literally took out all the, all of our, like one by one. Cause we had three, three gates right? and just went <laughs> <laughs> the back one went down. And it was just like, and like 12. Well, they're like 16 feet by, by 12 feet, right? And I mean, you know, too big. Yeah, big six. <laughs> big six. <laughs> and yeah, it just went down. And we're like, just go over where it is. <laughs> you know, like, well, just go. We're not fixing it now, right? Like, there's no way. We're <laughs> rain. So, and by the end of it, I think the last race, the, the last one had fallen down by the last race because the wind was coming in so hard. So, yeah, it was, it was crazy. I know the feeling. So let, let's start wrapping up. Let, talk to me yeah, about the winners because I think we I, – I know two of the three, yeah. and I'm really interested in, to hear about uh, the newcomer that I don't know about. So, so yeah. okay, first Sorry. one, Gab707. We, we all know him, right? Gab, DRL, really fast, really smooth. Uh, Elvin, you call him like the master tactician, which yeah, I'm not going to argue awesome. with. So what do you think of Gab's flying? Give me the two-minute version Elvin. So the way I describe Gab is, is yeah. you can hear can hear when Gab's flying. Um, you know, I, I know it's Gab by the way they're flying, by the by the by the sound that he's doing, and I can even tell the mood that he's in too uh, when he's starting to get pressured and he's starting to, you know, it's just like it, it starts becoming more precise, almost like just you know, it's it's, it's a sound, and he's 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 some people have it, he's got it. Now. Like he, 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 he gets it. Like it just, just there's, you know, some people that this is what they've really got a special gift. And I believe that. And I believe that he definitely has that as well. Um, not that people can't learn it, but I think that he's definitely got the special map is why the F1 pilots are the top F1 pilots, you know, because they've got something. Yeah. Um, definitely. or the base or whatever sport, you know, uh, he's got that. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think that's, I'm, I, I, I love Gab's flying. I think it's it's. I always enjoy watching a good 
a good uh, fly when he, when he's he's better when he gets pushed. Yeah, that's true. He gets, I, I've seen him a couple of times over the year gets pushed. Over the years get pushed and, and he does an amazing job. Cool. Uh, like just to watch it's exciting. It so. is very exciting. Elvin, what do you got to say about Gab's flying? Well, you know, he's he look, it, the dude's a pleasure to watch fly. That's what it is. I mean, it when when you think you got a big enough lead on him, he'll come back and cut your ass in half. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like how he says. I mean, it's just I mean, he's he's hard to beat like you know, I I'm going to make a re- reference to someone here in Portland that flies like him. We have this dude named Florian, right? And uh, Florian is is gab number two. Like, hard to beat. S- super hard to beat. Super tactical. Super, super, like, when you think you got him, he comes out of nowhere. Like, what the hell? Like, son of a man, I thought I had that race. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> No, I, I I saw you make that mistake, and I capitalize on it. Oh damn! Yeah, that's that's all you can say. I will say. Um, uh, so I watched some of the videos of uh, Gab's flying along with everybody else, and just like you said, um, I think what I love about watching Gab's flying is the ability for him to repeat the same line over and over again each and every lap because it. It literally it can be almost the same and like it's just not it's just not the line it's the line going to the next line it's very mm-hmm. smooth and that's what you like when you watch gab you have to think ahead because like you watch him take that corner but really in order to appreciate his flying you need to know what's coming up because he's setting mm-hmm. up for the next one and that's exactly. what's really cool about watching him fly uh, favorite, like my favorite part of his video is how he does, uh, like it's, it's a gate, a wall and a gate, and he does a power loop through it. And it's so precise when he goes through it. It's yeah. I mean, it's like, it's just barely clears that wall. It's angled enough to where he lines up to the next gate. I mean, that stuff is hard. Okay. Because we've yeah, done power loop gates and like, like the number of nosedive crashes and like people going <laughs> three stories up it's like i don't do complicated tracks because i don't want to ruin other people's stuff but like if we can just have like you know if we can clone gab about 200 times we can have some really great racing that people will watch (laughs) so that that, that's the thing okay moving on bolt yeah i know Mm -hmm. nothing about him tell me about bolt don't know anything about him (laughs) first time i saw him um was last spring, March. Uh, I was in Toronto, and there was, uh, it was actually his dad uh, rented a warehouse space in downtown, like just north North Toronto. And uh, I was spending a couple days there, um, and everybody was getting together on Sunday. I'm like, I'll check it out. Like, like I, don't, I, don't have, I have my drones here, but you know, I just want to go check it out. And uh, so I went over to the to the place. And it was, it wasn't a huge, it was a, just a warehouse, you know, low ceilings. And they had these, these kind of, you know, the big industrial shelving on one side and they were doing this, they had this loop kind of thing going and it was a very small loop and everybody's like, oh, you check out this, this, this kid, it's a 14 year old kid. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then I met all the people and I was like, hey, how's it going? I bought some stickers and some shirts. And I'm like, hey, you know, have stuff, you know. And, um, and so I sat down and I heard this kid fly. And I, I was like, holy shit. This kid flies like that. And I, I remember saying that. I'm like, I want to see the him against Gab. And I want to see what's going to happen. And... I didn't think that that would actually happen this year. And it happened two weekends ago and he was right on his heels. He was so on his heels, man. Like Gab was definitely like this kid is somebody to watch. And and it was just like, I could hear him and I'd be like, yeah, you know, it's like, that, that's it. That's the sound, you know? And, uh, yeah, 
that that's that's who bull bull FP or bull is going by now. Yeah. I'm not sure if I watched his feed or not because, like, you know, it's easy to watch Gab's feed because the name's right there. So I know I'm watching yeah. Gab's feed just like I, I yeah. know most of the time what Armonic is. <clears throat> so I don't know if I watched his feed. So I got, I got I no think that's my fault. for him. <laughs> yeah. I think that's my fault because he's waiting on me to get him the video. And, oh. and I, I, I've been, yeah, I've been uh, trying to get it. Uh, Not and, somebody, and man. We got to hurt in, somebody now. Yeah, it's in, it's in <laughs> Ottawa right now, uh, sitting on the receiver. Um, I'm trying to get it off. And, and the guys, I mean, everybody's trying to pick up all the pieces, right? I, there were still a couple things that were left there. So we're, we're trying to pick up pieces. So I'm, I'm trying to get that. Um, so that's oh, probably that's why. I, I don't know how much he was recording. Um, because he was asking me about it the last couple of days. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying. I'm really trying. So uh, I apologize. It's my fault. No, oh, no, I, 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 I like watching the FPV feed just, you know, because you can learn something about everybody's flying style just from watching their FPV feed. But yeah. uh, no, like when you get it out there, definitely send me a message because I do want to watch it just to just to give me reference, you know, in case I sure. you know get to meet him and I get to uh, size him up for the rest of the competition. Yeah. Man. OK, last person, Armonic, one of the one of the favorites, probably one of the nicest guys huh. I've ever met. You know, he's just True very that. well spoken, very friendly. Uh, and like I've known him since uh, Megadrone and uh, super nice guy. Congratulations for getting third. Yeah. Uh, do you know Ar- Armonic? What do you got? What do you got to say about Armonic? Uh, me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was the first time that I actually met him face to face. Oh, OK. It was was funny enough, you know, um, and I didn't know what to expect. I, I mean, I know him from working with Team Canada guys and, and I know him from, you know, he, there was, I think that's how he got on Team Canada because they, they did some IRA event on the West Coast last year and he was the winner from that. So it's kind of how that was all formed. Um, but I never really, because he was on the West Coast. I, you know, when I went out there, I didn't, I was, you know, for the three days I was out there, I was locked in a, in a house <laughs> for the most part uh, doing work. So I never really got out to meet a lot of people. And uh, so I never met him face to face. And I'll tell you, the first thing I noticed was he's just this big blue eyed huggable guy. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, I, I, I really like, I met him. I was just like, yeah, man. <laughs> and I think, you know, it was very much the same. It was just like, yeah. And, and I really enjoyed, you know, I didn't get, I, we didn't get a lot of time to really hang out. Um, because mm-hmm. I was all set up and by the time, you know, everybody left and, and the team camera guys went to the trailer and we popped over there for a little bit, but I was just like, I was blasted then, um, that we just went home and slept because we were back out of it in the morning the next day. So we didn't really get a chance to party or anything. Or, um, so I didn't really get a chance to hang out and, and have a good conversation, but we definitely had a few moments where we, you know, we kind of, you know, doing some things and, you know, kidding and stuff. And I really, really appreciated meeting him. He was a, he's a good guy. I yeah, like definitely. And, uh, and consistent flyer too. Very consistent mm-hmm. flyer. Um, like, like I said, I already knew Armonic for a while now. Elvin, do you, have you watched Armonic fly? Because, like, I don't know. I, you know, he he is. He's not my favorite, but I, you know, I I like all the Team Canada. You know, all all of those guys. You know, they they're uh, when they when you meet them they're the same person you know what i mean there's a there's a lot of guys in this a lot of guys front to be to be legit you know a lot of guys in here bullshit i mean they they got to present they got their presentation face you know they're out in public you know and you know i i tend to see through the shit i mean the, that attitude so you know i will say that team canada has it's kind of like the most one of the most realist teams that I've I've met. Um, those guys are the same guy. Like when you talk to him on the phone, talk to him on you know you see him face to face, chat. It's all the same. They're always the same guy. There's no no deviation from from that. You're not seeing some made up. You're not seeing Hulk Hogan. You know what I mean? It's because we're Canadian, right, dude? Canadian. I, I, I don't great. know if it's. Look, I don't know if it's, it's that, the culture, man, man. I can't say it's it. the culture. I, 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 look, I, I got some Canadian, you know, some Canadian ancestors too. You know, my my ancestors speak French, and uh, you know, and 
it it's I just think it's it's about you guys being where you live at. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of it's not like living in the United States, but it's similar. You know what I mean? It's yeah. similar, but it's not like living in the United States. It's 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 funny because I actually grew up. Um, <clears throat> I didn't grow up in Quebec. I grew up in Windsor, Ontario, which is right across from Detroit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I grew up during, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> when Detroit was uh, not going through its best phases. <laughs> and I remember, um, you know, we we grew up all all of my, you know, the nearest next major city, which was actually smaller than Windsor, was two hours away. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it was Toronto, which was four hours away. So I mean, we were surrounded by American television, American TV, and you know, I mean, I had no idea what. Canadian culture was until I actually went away to school and I moved to Toronto and, and it, it wasn't apparent, you know, it wasn't apparent right away. It was little things. And then all of a sudden I started seeing it and I was like, wow, there, there is a real difference. Right? Like not, not, <clears throat> you know, not, not like major, like, Oh, hit me in the face, but it's just like, it's, it's little things um, that make a difference that I think uh, I really didn't know growing up and, and appreciate more so now. And I see it, and uh, but you know, I still walk around, and people say, "Oh, are you American?" <laughs> <laughs> it happens every once in a while. I'll, I'll get it. I'll, I'll be talking, and I'm like, "Oh, are you from?" Where? No, I just got the Michigan accent. Oh, one of those oh man, yeah, exactly. I, you know what? You guys are nice to Americans. We are not that good of a culture. I'm sorry to say, we're, but. Uh, we're, 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 what are we called? The snow Mexicans? <laughs> isn't that, isn't that your president? Isn't that your president called us? The snow Mexicans. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. That, that went off the rails real quick. Yeah. Uh, no, okay. Don't, cool. don't listen to our what, president. You want to talk politics now? No, no, no. We're not no, going there. No, uh, no, let's see. No, back no, back no. to Armonic. Uh, Armonic, uh, like, I actually wa- like watching him fly. He's one of those guys where he's slightly different from Gab when it comes to flying. Uh, I don't think he's – okay, don't get angry at me, Armonic, just because I watch you <laughs> and compare you to Gab. I think where he loses efficiency is he isn't as good um, after he breaks from a gate. Uh, he loses like a, a tenth of a second, not even a tenth, maybe point zero one of a second. Uh, Gab, when he when he hits a gate, He's already moving to the next gate. That's really hard to learn. And, like, I think that's where Harmonic still is a little bit behind. But other than that, um, he's definitely a pilot that I've noticed that he gets better with packs. There are some pilots that get worse with packs. Harmonic mm-hmm. actually gets better with packs. He likes a lot of practice. So when he doesn't get his packs, the, you can definitely tell a difference in his flying style. But mm-hmm. uh, one of the best guys, really good flyer. You know, I wish him the best in terms of, uh, you know, getting him up there, and hopefully he'll catch up to Gab, and uh, we, we can see some really good racing there. But, uh, mm-hmm. hey, yeah, second is, Seth, yeah, third is nothing to laugh at uh, in, the, in this competitive no. environment because it takes no. a lot in order to get third. So, really, congratulations. Uh, over 100, 100 unique pilots. I mean, that's, that's you know... That is, um, yeah. That's like that's like playing poker, basically. You know, it's like you need a lot of luck and a lot of skill all at the same time because it yeah. just takes one mistake and uh, you're out of the you're top out. ten. You're not, well, actually you're out of the game period <laughs> with qualifiers. Right. So, uh, congratulations to all of them. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a chance to talk to all of them. You know, just to get their sense of uh, you mm-hmm. know how the Drone Nationals went with them. But you know, as times allowed and all of that stuff. Yeah, so, Ryan, your your time's coming, Ryan. Your your time's coming, Ryan. Ryan's like you should just name him PR FPV because like you just right. need to implant Ryan's DNA into all the FPV pilots because yeah. like as Gab says, if Ryan walks into a room with twenty people, you just made twenty new friends. Yeah, that's true. so Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, because like because I was I was asking you know like I. I we were talking about me and why we're talking about doing uh, a couple of events, you know, back, back, back shots of the events. And, um, yours, oh, another one came up and then why mentioned this one, you guys is. And I said, Oh yeah, that's right. Well, well let's see who we're going to get on the show. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we've had pretty much all the FPV team, FPV Canada on, 
and who do who do we want? You know, I'm like somebody new, somebody oh, and I send I send a message to Gab and a message to to Ryan. Right? I said, any suggestions? And Ryan goes, me. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I, it's about time. I, I need to be on the show. I'm like, no. I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, man. You were mean to Ryan. Uh, yeah. Next time. Next time. Uh, that's so, so you haven't had Ryan on the show yet? Uh, oh, no. We've no, had him. We've had Ryan oh, on the okay. show. He's a just, frequent flyer. Just yeah, not lately. Just yeah. yeah. Oh, he's, he, he'll be on in a couple of weeks. Just yeah. Nice. yeah. We, we, like, we, him and the, him, Gab, David, and um, uh, Alex are like frequent flyers over here, man. These guys, and Shelby like too, this. Shelby, Shelby Ball, all those guys—they just come out of nowhere. Hey, they got we got a lot to learn from them. So, yeah. um, last question. Well, actually, two more questions, Ooh. and then uh, we'll wrap this up. Uh, obviously, you're done for uh, nationals this year. So for 2018, we were talking a little bit about you know trying to really, you know, continue the climb back up to you know build this into something that resembles professional sports. Um, like, is there any plans already in the works? Are you, you know, what what it like? What venues are you thinking? Were you? Thinking of it is it going to be smaller, bigger. Yeah. Any, any, anything you want to throw out there right now? Uh, we've got a couple of our earlier dates picked. Um, <clears throat> they're like the opener. We're going to be in. Uh, we're going to open in, here in Montreal. You know, I just need. I need something close um, uh, to, to just kind of open into it. And we, we were lucky enough to be associated, uh, so affiliated, not affiliated. Like they're helping us. Um, the it's a private. Uh, it's like the Montreal. Um, aeronautics kind of local authority, um, the private organization that takes care of all commercial kind of events are having a big conference and they're like, you know, they brought us in and, and they got us hooked up at, uh, the conference center again, the same place to be in, in December, but we've got the big room, which is like where they have comic con in Montreal. So it's not going to be the full, it's like three big areas. I think we're just getting one of the big rooms, but it's, it's like crazy. It's, you know, high ceilings it's you know um so that's something that we're we're planning and that's going to be for mid-april uh, and that'll be the kind of kickoff for the next season um i think you know still working out details but i think my intent for the next season is to um you know definitely run certain events and they're not going to be like i want to pick specific locations across the country because you know as i did this year i wanted to be very careful that we didn't saturate one area Mm -hmm. um, with it because then you get kind of uneven even though you know west coast started earlier in the year and then we kind of on the west on the east coast kind of got it more towards the end of the year and i did that because i wanted all those guys to to be able to to come over um and and have enough time advance notice that you know the higher end guys could could know early that they're involved and they could get a ticket um so i think next year i want to do maybe four or five specific locations if I can win it. No, I gotta be careful because I got a full time job and family too, right? And you know <laughs> and I mean I, I really I, I probably haven't done any shout outs about, you know, my wife and, and daughters and stuff, but they've been amazingly supportive. Like I come home, I make dinner, we sit down, we eat, and then they sit down and do their thing and I come into the office and I work until, you know, they all go to bed and then, you know, and then I wake up and I go to my full time job and I you know so I've been doing that for many, many months. And uh, so I want to try to try to do something a little more realistic next year, not only for, you know, my family's sake and my sake, but for the quality of the event. Um, I think it was just, again, it was just too big this year. It was just way too big. Um, and it doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be that big. And I think uh, we will keep that indefinitely in mind for next year. I completely agree with you. Like I ran myself ragged this year as well in terms of events that I put on, which I mean, we had a lot of great events. You know, I've got like I literally have like 200 gigabytes of video that I need to sift through like actual yeah. like we hired cameramen to go shoot this video. I'm like, 
Oh, oh. I don't have time. I don't. I don't want. It. But like, I gotta then, do it because then, right. <laughs> it's because like that's promotional material that you got to do something with and make mm-hmm. stuff out of. And I, I totally understand. Here, take December off. That's that's my advice to you. <laughs> December, yeah, like don't good. even look. Don't even look at it after your last event. Oh no! But the funny thing is, it's like I still have a game to ship this year. Oh yeah, in my full time job. Yeah. Oh yeah, so. you can't you can't leave that. Uh, I I know that feeling. Uh, but you know what? Uh, so uh, Canadian Joe Nationals is it going to be around the, around the same time again in 2018? It makes sense for the timing, um, but I'm I'm not I, I, I'm it's it's as of right now it's undecided on how exactly we're going to structure it because I need to make some pretty major overhauls to the system. Um, I think the, the system that we ran this year, um, was just too complicated and it was too, and it didn't, it, I mean, it worked well in regards to making sure that the right pilots, you know, made it through. I really, you know, it was hands down, it was good for that, but it just didn't give some of the other extra flavor that I think that we could, we could change it up. But also, you know, do we go one that everybody goes to again, or do we do East and West? Um, and then just call it, you know, Eastern and Western until it's a little bigger. Um, I'm still, still kicking around those, those ideas. I think it's going to, based on the venues we get, it's going to kind of determine how we do that. But, uh, but if we do one, I'd like it to be targeted to either Alberta or, uh, or, uh, BC. Okay, cool. So only reason why I'm asking is because when you do know, like, let us know, because like, I've been to a lot of like, uh, I get to most of the large events here in the United mm-hmm. States. I really would like to get to one of the Canadian drone nationals and hang out with you guys mm. and just like, uh, cool. just, you know, have fun. And uh, yeah, I don't sure. know if Elvin's interested, but that's well, definitely yeah. in my books, you know, to try to get up to Canada. I, the closest I've been to Canada is Niagara Falls. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> oh, well, that's so. close. And you didn't even come over to the pretty side of Niagara Falls. I don't think I was able to make it. I literally was there for like 20 minutes. Like it was kind of like driving through. It's like, all right, yeah, we got 20 minutes. We stopped. We look, okay, okay. Now we got to get back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Start yeah. Oh, so you, you did actually come in. Yeah. So, so but yeah, I would love to visit Canada. I think it's a, you know, great country. We've got to yeah. uh, visit our partners up north. And uh, yeah, just keep us up to date because we would love. Last question. Yeah. Do yeah. you see any parallels? of fpv this fpv this yeah i don't really want to call it racing i'm just going to say fpv and video games with esports <laughs> you can't say it shut up leave him alone no no uh okay you can't fine. say it that's right. what he's he we'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about it all fine be that way you're no fun <laughs> all right we're wrapping up supposed to ask that question no, I, I mean in, in all honesty yeah like i think like yes <laughs> we, we won't go there like, we'll, we'll talk about that in, a, uh, in another episode we will talk about this awesome. and uh six months so uh matthew somebody yes. listening and wants to help okay. you out maybe volunteer that's not gonna sure. happen but we can all hope <laughs> partner up Somebody's give you ideas you where can hey, they man, can i get are we live sponsor are we, are we live right now no, no not I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. somebody's <laughs> gonna call up and go hey man can you sponsor me dude dude don't even yeah. go there dude. stop dude. asking for sponsors I'm... elvin <laughs> I mean, you know, one thing, one thing that I've done in, is to give, um, is to give some of the guys that, you know, uh, I have extra flags and I have some of these things here and there and I don't have a lot, but you know, I've had a few people over the, the year, the last couple of years be like, Hey, you know, we're up here. We really want to do something, but there's not really a community. And it's like, you know, yeah, here, and I, I, you know, pay for the shipping. I'll, I'll send you a flag. I mean, they're, they're nice flags. Um, and now I've got a few extras, so I'll definitely. I've seen uh, I've seen those flags. There are oh. nice flags. They they don't they don't skimp up there. <laughs> they don't no, skimp. I, up there. <laughs> those, yes, those guys, you know, I I won't say whose flags, but they oh, don't just man. glue okay. the shit together. Now now we're gonna start wrapping up, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If somebody wants to help out or you know give you ideas, or just want to reach out yes. to you. Where can they yeah. reach out to you? 
Um, there are a few different places. Um, if you want to reach out to FPV Canada, you can just email info at fpvcan.com and just uh, ask ask a question. Um, that's probably the quickest, easiest way. Um, we have a, a, a couple people that receive those, and uh, we all just kind of jump in and try to try to help out whatever. Um, we also, of course, have all of our local FPV kind of chapter pages, so FPV Windsor, FPV GTA North, FPV Toronto, FPV Halifax, FPV Ottawa, FPV Montreal, FPV Vancouver, FPV Sherbrooke. I think I'm, I don't know if I'm missing any, um, which you can just type those in, uh, or the FPV Canada website, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, so Twitter is FPV Can, FPV um, and yeah, just just jump on the boards. Dude. We're we're always there. Um, if you're local, the, the the whole point of FPV Canada was to be, you know, if you have somewhere local and you want to kind of build that up, so. Try to jump into the website at uh, fpbcan.com, and you can go to the individual chapters, and you can even email the different groups there directly. So, if you want, if you're in Ottawa, you want to. If you're in Vancouver, you can email that in Vancouver. So, cool beans. So, oh, or even you could actually just email the uh, the F- every chapter has their own email address as well. So it's like Vancouver at fpbcan and GTA North at fpbcan. So you can do that as well. There you go. So, and if you're a pilot and you want to fly and you want to be in the Canadian Joe Nationals, then you definitely want to hook up with them and, uh, you know, have your go at trying to get to, you know, uh, be a winner at the 2018 Canadian Joe Nationals, which is, you know, it's fun. Why not? Hey, do you allow Americans to race in the Canadian Joe Nationals? Uh, we did last year. We did I extended last? it to the, yeah, um, but I did say that uh, this year, um, that it was, I was always, I was fine to welcome people in, but, uh, we were very much for the nationals portion of it. It was had to be Canadian okay. and, and it wasn't to be exclusive. Um, uh, yeah, it was just so that we could make sure that we, you know, we had a nice offering for Canadians. Um, but yeah, we, last year we had a lot of Americans, um, come up from Vermont and New York and all that. It's so close. Hey, I got an idea. You got to you got to do this right here. Invitational. All the dudes that are on podcast race. That'd be alright. <laughs> hey, I want Maybe. 50 by 50 foot gates, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> if if only there was some sort of platform like an esport or something we could do that with. Uh, okay. Now you're trying to be funny. <laughs> I'm telling you what, though, like we are going to have a discussion about esports and drone racing because like I just watched like not even a few weeks ago. And I promise I'll cut this off because we're over two hours. But I just watched a, a CSGO tournament on ESPN. And oh, that, yeah. And that stuff like they got it down to a science. I mean, like I was you watching the last it. one. Oh, that was, was it? good. Oh, it's good. Dude. So like, what, what was it you were watching? CSGO. Uh, CSGO. Counter-Strike Go. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, like, like the how they how they do it nowadays, and like the shadowing and the, and the strategy. Oh man, it's well, I like love, I love the new skins they use it, man. That's some badass shit right there. And on that note, go watch some see it. No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on that note, go outside and fly before it gets cold. In which case, yes. go inside and fly your little tiny whoops. Go see Jesse P. And try not to kill anybody with your drones. Uh, no, that that that, that, last, good. that was sounds not like a, a plan. No, that's it's it's, it's it's sound advice. <laughs> All right, we're cutting <laughs> we're cutting off. And, that and that wait, was wait, terrible. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, I got something. Fun. Oh no! Today I crashed. I crashed in a blackberry bush, right? And well, uh, the thistles on them, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got the thorns on them. So I got on my blue jeans, you know, and I'm stomping through this stuff with my. My Danny's on, on, right? And I'm like, I don't care, you know. <laughs> right? And then one of them hits me right in the pecker. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely R rated. We're going to have to cut this out. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, okay, that, that, that's going to itch later, you know? <laughs> Drop like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> It was I, not worth it. All right, man, that see was you your own fault. It was great having you on here, Matt. Hey, guys, I really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, eh? <laughs>
Have a good one. We are cutting out. Thanks so much. Bam.